just all right. Greetings, imagination connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, Robert Meyer Burnett. And I invite you to watch and listen to the Designing Hollywood podcast, brought to you by Martika Abera and the great, legendary Hollywood costume designer, Marilyn Vance. I am afforded the wonderful opportunity of co-hosting the show. If you are interested in the magic of Hollywood, the design of Hollywood, the clothes of Hollywood, watch the Designing Hollywood Podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts from, or find the video version on the John Campia YouTube channel. That's right, the Designing Hollywood Podcast. Why would you ever want to miss it? Especially if you love the movies. <laughs> Well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your pharaoh of physical media. That's right, your pharaoh of physical media filling his tomb with all the discs he has yet to watch. That's right, me, Robert Meyer Burnett, and I'm coming at you with Let's Get Physical Media, episode number, I don't know, 147? Who knows? I don't know what it is. It's something close around there. You know, it says on the description. I, I trust that that's right. Uh, you know, it's a big week here on Let's Get Physical Media. We're here on a Saturday. Know why? Because tomorrow I'm at WonderCon doing our 22 years running Starship Smackdown panel. It was something we started out as a lark, and we're still doing it at San Diego Comic-Con and at WonderCon. So if you want to come down and see me tomorrow, I'll be at WonderCon in Anaheim. And afterwards, we can go drink at the bar at one of the two hotels that are right across the street from one another which makes things very convenient. But you know what? It's not why you're here, is it? You're here for the same reason that I'm here, to share the love with this guy. Every week we have a face-off, and he, he he made me this shirt. It's even got stuff on the back. Wait, he, wait he's, he's trying... Oh, Patrick. Patrick made them. Okay, well, hang on. You're, you're talking before your time. I haven't introduced you yet. I haven't introduced you yet. There might be people watching new because it's... Hang on a second. They can't hear you yet anyway. Just saying. I'm just saying. He's talking in my ear. He's your German. Your favorite German. Your only German. <laughs> the German. All the way from F <laughs> FC Saarbrücken Deutschland, Mr. Dieter Bastian. Greetings and good evening. <laughs> Greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Dieter here. Here I'm rocky like a hurricane and welcome. To the B&B Motel, where I come to you unshaven on the Saturday evening. And wow, is that is that your so version happy. of being a rebel, being unshaven? Yeah, yeah. Oh, unshaven. nice. It's not a Sunday, Rob. It's not a Sunday. So I'm really happy that you got your finally jersey. But this one, this one, Rob, Patrick made for us. Patrick's, uh, uh, Patrick's and, and pronounce his last name for us, would you? Uh, Patrick Keller. Patrick Keller. Okay, but well, how do you okay? How do you pronounce? Pardon me. His YouTube show yeah. is called Patrick's uh, his Living Room. YouTube channel. Uh, no, he changed it into English. Rob, it's Patrick's Basement. Patrick's Basement. He changed it in English. He doesn't even speak English. Yeah, yeah. Patrick's Basement. It's snow. Are you rubbing in the fact that I have yet to get my Conan Arrow discs? Is that what you're trying to do in the background there? Oh, not really, Rob. I was thinking oh, really? what I can put up and, and I thought about these two. But Rob, yeah, in really your face. You, yeah. That you finally got your jersey because as I told you, the package at first came back to me. I didn't know why. Why is this It happened. Terry sent back. me a package, it got sent back to him too. Yeah. But I got so, that I got a package. Finally. I just want to point out that yeah. I got a package from Norway this week. And from Terrier, and I got a package from Germany because I am truly a cosmopolitan international mover and shaker. So I want to thank you both for that. Do you know what was in Terrier's package? Uh, I think something to eat, some chocolates, and some pillow stuff that he, he told us about. He, Terrier got me Zardoz pillowcases. And you know, nice. Elizabeth loves Zardoz, she loves yeah. Sean Connery. <laughs> 
And, uh, uh, you know, I told her about these mythical pillowcases, but they were sent here and somehow I didn't get to, I went to pick them up at the post office. It was a whole debacle. They got sent back, but then they came back. Terry resent them to me. I got them. And, uh, he put in, he put in these giant Norwegian chocolate bars, these, which by the way, I I wish he hadn't sent them because I'm addicted now. They're fantastic. (laughs) Of course you sent me Haribo. So I got, I got candy from all over the world. He also sent, now I got to say. Uh, this is not really appropriate for physical media, but I'm going to mention it anyway. He sent me a, a tin of liver paste. Yeah, I've seen that. On, a delicacy, on and and I on my I took a picture because I swear to God, the yeah. kid, the kid. I mean, because I'm a you know a narcissistic egomaniac. I looked at the <laughs> tin and I said, "Hey, that's me. That's me as a child." So I took a picture and put it on Instagram of the two of us. Now here's the thing: I was going to try it. I was going to try it. I was going to try and eat this Norwegian liver paste. So, you know, there's now four adult dogs in our... Well, there's a one-year-old puppy. There's 13 dogs in our house. (laughs) I had this liver paste open. I just... Before I finished taking off the top of the tin, I had four dogs surrounding me, kind of the way that we surrounded Berlin. <laughs> no, I'm, nice, just nice, I'm just nice kidding. I'm just metaphor. Right, I'm just so. kidding. But they were there, and they were ready to tear out my throat. And um, so what I had to do, what I had to do was I had to cut it in quarters, and I had to go to each one of their bowls and put because that's what I do when I put special treats. You go to their bowls, put it in their bowls. But while I was putting in the bowls for one, I had to push aside the other dogs. I'm like, yo. So I wish I could have made a video. I was going to try and, you know, I couldn't couldn't do the selfie video. Anyway, so I just want to say to Terry, uh, thank you for and, – and also the dogs stole a bag of licorice candy. Yeah. They just – I mean, Gilbert will steal anything, and, and they had licorice candies in their beard. I don't think they particularly enjoyed licorice. They just knew it was food, and, and, and then when they started eating it, they're like, what the hell is this? But they did take a few of these chocolate bars out. I found them. They were only able to get into one because these are tough, tough to get into. But this Norwegian chocolate's the bomb, yo. Yep. The bomb sneaky, diggity, as they sneaky, say. Sneaky but this and has Rob- nothing to do with the show yeah. at hand, Dieter. This is this no. is not why we're here, is it? Just just quick one, Rob. What what kind of number do you have on your jersey? Ten. Exactly, Rob. And this is, is that because I'm not- a perfect ten. No, I didn't it think so. Ex- it is deliberately ch- a chosen number because the number 10, considering soccer players, are the game makers of the game. So uh-huh. you are on the one side defending Hollywood, you know, if you are at a John Campion show, <laughs> and you are leading the charge <laughs> against Hollywood, you know, if you're on the Fandom Menace channels, you know. So number 10 is often... I'm I fandom menace adjacent, makers. but only in certain things. <laughs> so the number 10 is often tied to the game makers of a team. And here, even if you're not too familiar with soccer, but those are names, Rob, I think you will know too, because here are at least, I give you three, the 10 best players to have worn the number 10 shirt, Rob. And let me just see. What we have today, we have Francesco Totti, Italy, wears this shirt. Michel Platini, wears the, uh, has worn the number 10. Ronaldinho has worn the number 10. Zinedine Zidane from France had the number 10. Diego Maradona, Rob, has worn the number 10 on his shirt. You know, the hand of God can, can make goals with his hand, not with not with a set. Pele, Rob. Pele had Pele, yeah. Yeah, even I know who that is. 10. You know, I just want you to know half the people watching this show don't know anything about European football. Yeah. So and they're like, what are Lionel, you talking about? It's so fine. The last one, Rob. Lionel, Lionel Messi has the number 10. I know team. that. If, if that's not good comedy, Rob, you are the game maker of your own channel. Wow. 10 is, is chosen for a reason, Rob. It's not really nearly picked out of some crazy... Idea the 10 is chosen, Rob, as a game maker that you are. Defending, you know, defending Hollywood and attacking Hollywood. I appreciate in that. In some cases. You know? By the way, I do want to it give a shout out. Perfectly. I want to give a shout out to our moderator, Tom Jr. Jackson, for making this. Of course, I threw in the second site, Dawn of the Dead, 
not a great not a great Photoshop job. I did that pretty quickly, but you know I don't know what this expression is, but I like it. So thank you, Tom Junior Jackson, for uh, making this uh, generated image. I had to put it in Pharaoh Physical Media. There you go. Um, nice. I bet I know what you want to know. Uh, actually, Rob, it's Saturday. Do we have? Numbers? Oh, we do. We do. Ooh, Would you like okay. to hear about some I, of the? I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't expecting that, Rob. Now, if you if you would have asked me uh, in my 2024 bingo card if Godzilla would would have one movie out that would be a box office hit, much less two movies yeah. out that would be a box office hit, I would have said you're high. Of course, Godzilla minus one came out in 2023, but Godzilla minus one minus color came out in 2024. Oh. It grossed over a hundred million dollars worldwide. I believe it's the most successful international Japanese film of all time, I think. But Godzilla X Kong. Have you seen it? Yeah. Unfortunately not, Rob. It's opening next week here. We have to wait oh. another week, unfortunately. Okay, well, it's a hoot. I mean, I didn't... Look, man, I know there's a lot of people that think I'm crazy, but I gotta, I gotta put Godzilla King of the Monsters only because it appealed to my sensibilities more. But this yeah. movie's a lot of fun. It's, it's pretty goofy. Yeah, you have seen it, Rob. I did see it. it. I did see it. And it's a lot of fun if you like this kind of thing. Uh, this yeah. movie skirted uh, on the edge for me. Compared to compared to the last one, Rob, Kong vs. Godzilla? Uh, you know what? To be honest, I think I like this better. The The last okay. the last movie had two great battle sequences. The end battle sequence. Woo! And then the... Uh, <laughs> then the um, uh, the ba I love the air aircraft carrier battle, battle sequence yeah. in the ocean. Yeah. This has a lot of cool fight scenes. Um, I, you know, I'll tell you something about this movie, though. This movie is clearly King Kong's movie. Yeah, and no, and no. I and I got to tell you, King Kong's King Kong. King Kong's a lover, not a fighter. King Kong's a, a tragic romantic figure, and now they've they they're they're as Americans are wont to do, they have to take our creation and make him better than the Japanese creation of Godzilla. Let me just tell you something. Let me just tell you the real reality of the situation, okay? If there was if there was a real matchup of these two, the Japanese made two Godzilla versus King Kong movies in the 60s. All right? And I just want to say that Godzilla would wipe the floor with King Kong. Just just I mean, and now they have them team up and all this stuff, but I do not like how the Americans are once again trying to make it look like our creations are better than the Japanese. You know, mm, I'm just saying, I'll take, I'll I'm just take saying, you. look, we already, Roland Emmerich, a German already fucked up Godzilla for the American market. Just saying. <laughs> and you know what? The Japanese reclaimed him in uh, Godzilla yep. Final Wars by, by watching the man in the suit Godzilla wipe the floor with the German American iguana Godzilla. So we saw that, which was good. And I liked it. And you had the alien controller. Uh, basically from Godzilla versus the Astro Monster, kind of come back in a different form and was disappointed in the German-American Godzilla, the immigrant <laughs> Godzilla. Uh, so now I, I, I still, though, this is like a King Kong movie masquerading as a... This is more of a sequel to Godzilla or King Kong. This is like Skull Island. Yeah. And I get it. I understand. I know. I loved Skull Island. Yeah. I thought Skull Island was dope. But, you know, I, I, I did yeah, not too. think... I think Godzilla kind of was done dirty in this movie. Just a little bit. And then they, 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 they turned him pink, or her pink. Godzilla's got a kid, you know. I mean, the pink energy blasts. Like, is this oh, some yeah. subtle progressive thing going on here? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I see you. I see what you're doing. I see. Just saying. But, but yeah, it was it was a fun you... romp at the, at fun, the old fun, picture okay, show. Fun. But here's the important thing. Guess how yeah. much it made. Guess how much its global bow has been. Ooh, tough. Tough rope. What do you think? 100. 175, bruh. Ooh. Yes. Oh, the monster verse no. is alive and well. Uh, Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, continues to show gusto at the international box office, coming in with an added $31.2 million on Friday for a three-day running cum of $47.9 million in 62 markets. Not included in that total is China. 
Saturday, which added an estimated $18 million, and that's a good sign in the Hollywood tepid market and portends a $40 million opening session there. Domestic is also psyched on the sequel, and if the numbers hold through Easter Sunday, Godzilla vs. Kong will top $175 million. Nice. Um, they it dominated the Chinese market as well. So uh, that's pretty dope. It's 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 burning up the charts all over the world. Now, obviously, uh, this is just we don't have all the rest of the box office, but yeah. um, this is the second and best. It hasn't even started everywhere. Though, like yeah, it said. hasn't started everywhere. Um, so this is what our friend on Deadline, Anthony Delessandro, says. Yeah. Uh, after a Friday night post, this is how a great box office weekend should be. A studio goes into the frame expecting X, and they wind up with a substantially higher Y. That's what girls would say that uh, I used to make out with in high school. Just saying. <laughs> it was definitely, they thought they were going to get X, but they got a Y, if you know what I'm saying. And I know Irene Jobson does. It was definitely a good Friday for Legendary and Warner Brothers, with more walk-up business than expected, as Godzilla X Kong, the New Empire, posted a $37 million first day putting it on the path to a $75 million opening weekend. It got an A- minus cinema score, and it's the second best U.S. Canada to start for a MonsterVerse of their five movies, but also the fifth best Easter weekend opening ever after Batman v Superman, Super Mario movie, Furious 7, and The Fate of the Furious. So this is pretty great. Uh, you know, I think the same weekend where Jesus comes back, it's nice to see Godzilla and Kong come back too. <laughs> You know, maybe they can save the world again. Oh, nice you never know. So there you go. Uh, I, I want to go on a Godzilla Easter egg hunt. Do we have uh, some uh, big movie coming out next week, or does Godzilla X Kong have some room? I think. I think. You know what? Let me let me see because I think a movie that I really want to see. Uh, a Civil War is coming out from, from Alex Garland. Civil War. So uh, I think you know what might be coming out next week. I'm just checking this out. Yeah. Um, and it would have been awesome if they opened this movie this weekend, but I understand why they didn't. Uh, let's see. Let me just check, to make sure. No. Um, I'm looking, and you know, for whatever reason, uh, I can't. Am I? Uh, well, I think the first omen. What I was going to say is maybe. Oh. Op April fifth. Yes, indeed, April the first 5th. omen. And by the way. Yeah. I just would like to point out that the first Omen is a 20th Century Studios title. It is the first of four movies that President Steve Asbell has had something to do with. Uh, that uh, 20th Century Studios, I mean, as they move over the head of one of the co-heads of Fox Searchlight, they give him, they make him the president of both 20th Century Studios and Walt Disney Studios over a guy that's been responsible, Steve Asbell, responsible for the first Omen, uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, and Alien Romulus. Three bangers. Hopefully they're bangers. I haven't seen any of them. And then, of course, Deadpool and Wolverine is also a former Fox title that's been brought over. But, you know, those relationships that Steve has forged with his over 20 years at 20th century, you know, let's give it up for Steve. I hear, you know, the, um, the editor of the first omen is Sam Raimi's editor Bob Morowski, uh, who worked on who worked at um, Grindhouse Releasing too. Bob Morowski oh, nice. edited the first omen. The first omen looks great, and it had to go back to the ratings board a number of yeah. times before they got their R. Ooh. I mean, it would have been cool if Disney can, can rele released an X horror film, but you know, what you yeah. can we can we expect something unrated later down the line on physical media? You know, I don't I don't know if we can expect anything from the numb nuts at Disney and their physical media. <laughs> I mean, these are the same people that have had the entire Fox library for five years, and the only thing that they've remastered is one... I can't even say what it is because I'm not supposed to know, but it's one movie, and I'll tell you this, it's not live action. I mean, other than the Cameron titles, yeah, you know, they've done nothing. Where's Patton in 4K? Where's the French Connection in 4K? Where's my beloved fucking Zardoz, speaking of pillowcases? They're never gonna re they're never gonna remaster Zardoz in 4K, but they should, they should. And by the way, you know what else they haven't remastered in 4K? Uh, the five original Planet of the Apes movies. There's there's ten, but they haven't done the original five. Uh, hit that button. Hit that go ape button. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Where's the go ape button on Disney Plus? Yeah. I mean, you know what? You can watch Prey 
on Disney Plus now because Hulu is on Disney Plus. They changed yeah. their logo and made it green. But you know what you can't watch? You can't watch Planet of the Motherfucking Apes on Disney Plus. Where is that Go Ape button? There's only one thing kids love more than dinosaurs, and that is apes on horseback with shotguns killing humans. I know exactly. I did because when I was five years old, they scared the fuck out of me, and I love them, and you can't see them on Disney Plus in 4K because they have not remastered. They have Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes coming out, but they have not remastered the original five Planet of the Apes movies. Why have they so not done this? We, we unlocked that at least we got our own Go Ape button. And Rob, I think we should continue from our last week where we actually ended with the James Cameron titles and continue actually with the james cameron titles rob did you get some james cameron titles well this week i got one okay so which one? so so check this out so check this out not yeah. only did amazon delay my cameron titles but then they delayed them again they said that my cameron title a cameron title had shipped and then they said yeah. oh oh nope sorry it hadn't shipped it's been delayed and then they gave me another notice, and it showed up this morning with one other disc. So yes, now now I uh, here it is, and I was afraid that I was wasn't going to get an O ring. But now uh, I notice on your camera title. Do you know what you don't have on yours? Do you know what's the sticker? Bro. The sticker. I, I now it. I removed like, it. Oh, you did. Okay. Now, did you, yeah. your sticker have this? Is this first of all? Can because I, I would like? Can I rant a little bit about this? Yeah. I'm like, okay. They use the 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 horrible adhesive. Yeah, totally. They totally. it was a pain in the ass, Rob. So yes. here's the thing: yes. these, I'm not going to call them douchebags, but I am so look. We have had 40, 45 years of physical media coming out in various forms. Now there are some companies that know if they're going to put a yeah. stupid fucking sticker that says "new to 4K Ultra HD" add to your collection. Really? Anybody that's buying this, do you think they don't know that it's newly out in 4K? I mean, what is this supposed to do? You know what this sticker says? That we're all fucking idiots. We're not. The whole point, yeah. the whole reason we're buying this is because, oh, it says yeah. Yeah. Uh, a 4K Ultra HD right there on the top of the disc. Uh, new to 4K Ultra HD. I don't think any human being who collects physical media uh, didn't know this. So you put a sticker and you guys used the wrong adhesive, the horrible adhesive, horrible. the adhesive that you it have to, pain even... in the ass to, get to remove. Well, it. yeah. So what you got to do is you got to get duct tape and like, but then if you yeah. use too much, then it pulls off the shiny cover. I mean, these are just things that we as collectors know and on company, you know, who knows the difference? Sony knows the difference. Thank God Sony's taking over so we don't have to deal with this bullshit anymore because Disney knows fuck all. They used to be the greatest physical media company in the world. Now, the question the easier, is... The easier to do, Rob, would be just put it on the cellophane, you know? The yeah, like normal people would instead of this dumb thing. But I have to yeah. say, I but, do I do like this cover. A lot of people yeah, might not like this Rob. cover, I'm, but I'm, Alien, I'm I think this cover is all, nice. All three covers. Yeah. Against the water titles, Rob. Those are gold, gold, golden covers. I mean, yeah, th th this is somebody that knows how to use Photoshop, you know, because this is the heart of the movie, Newton's, Newton Ripley. Yeah. You don't need to see a xenomorph. You, you see the love, the love. You see the feminine power, true feminine power, true feminine power, something that women, only women can do. Only women can do. Only women can have children, and that's where the power of Ripley comes from in this movie. Men get eviscerated in this film because they don't have the love they don't have the feminine wow. love and the, the power of creation. And the end of this movie, what do you have? You have two women, two fearsome mothers facing off against one another. And you know what? It would have been kind of cool if they, signed, they they both said, hey, you know what? You don't really have to you know, burn all my eggs. We're two mothers. <laughs> would, would be nice. You know? Would be nice. You know? Why'd you, we you had know a what? deal. You know? Just you leave me here on LV426. You know. yeah. And the alien mother didn't know that the nuke was going to go off, but she had to rescue. I, I, the nuke, yeah. not newt. Anyway, did you? the real important no. thing is, did you look at the transfer? No. Rob, last week, I had two titles, have, wa have watched one. This week, I had th have all three, and I have watched all three. So, so Deeds, what do you think? The Abyss, to the Abyss 
at first back again because in the live chat some people thought i was disappointed with the transfer no i'm not if you can take the abyss out of the equation even if it is the abyss picture quality is great but since it is the abyss and we know how it should look i'm not a fan of the look but the picture quality itself is great but i would have preferred another look because like i said rob now the pool is clean it looks like it's shot in a pool so without <laughs> without the crane rob your precious verisimilitude did get a little bit of a dump in this version here comes the kicker rob i can't believe i'm saying this uh oh my favorite of the three aliens in this transfer do you remember do you remember showgirls Rob? you know showgirls we first got the german one yeah the dnr with the brutal there brutal there was colors. something about that transfer that that kind of added that gave it like a little oomph. yeah 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 and now listen to me listen to me bobby bobby listen to me as the canonista that you are you know we have the first alien imagine you know grimy sleazy you know tripping you need that film crane but now you are 50 years later medical bay how do you want the medical bay clean sterile you know rob it works for that movie it works actually but do you don't do you, okay 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 do you don't think it's a little too bright actually no rob the one that i found too bright is true lies yeah yeah from my perspective aliens not rob and actually rob i can't believe i'm saying this it was like seeing aliens for the first time abyss was great too but i'm I had, didn't have had any reference because the DVD was way back. I haven't seen the movie in a long time, but I knew Aliens from the Blu-ray. So really, Rob, I had a good time with Aliens, like watching it for the first time. And for this movie, Rob, it actually works. Just look at this Canon Easter, you know, it's 50 years ahead. The future is a little bit cleaner, you know. I didn't mind the transfer, Rob. I can't believe I'm saying this, but for me, this... This is a well. A I'm still buy. stuck with it's my boot. Buy. I got my boot. Yeah. I haven't got my. I haven't got the new version yet. But you know, I've had this for a while. So so this I'll rock, rock my Spanish boot for a while. Resumilitude, a little bit of an uptick, but even without the crane. And this, unfortunately, needed the crane. You know, you are deep down in the water. You know? Well, I mean, uh, you know, it, it, the, the, okay, I'll tell you something. I, the, that's an interesting observation, but I've always felt like at the depths that they're at, there's not a lot of sea life down there anyway. Yeah. You know, but but yeah, and of course they shot it inside an abandoned nuclear yeah. facility. Hey, yeah. did you happen to watch, did you happen to watch one of my favorite special features ever is Under Pressure Making the Abyss? That's yeah. on. Uh, but from... From in the DVD days, Rob. I haven't watched oh, it again, but it's great. It's it's just so, like the Alien the Alien documentary is great. It's so good. You know? It's it's really really uh, really so, really. So good. Rob, go into Aliens, not immediately hating it. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Rob. I just you know? dipped in. I just looked at it quickly, and I I thought it looked okay. pretty. I like. I thought it looked pretty damn good. I just but I was skipping through it just because I I just yeah. got it this morning, so I I didn't have a chance to sit down and watch. I'm gonna watch it today. Um, uh, for me, Rob, it was totally a, a surprise. And of course, the final one. Well, true lies. It seems like really that the master is difficult. Just, I don't know why. And what I mostly don't like for, for from the new skin is actually the colors. I'm not a fan of the colors because if uh, Simon, Bill Paxton's character's Corvette, it should be red rob but you are like you like that teal orange look you know no i don't it's more yeah now it is more in the orange instead of red so true lies it is watchable but it is a little bit of an up and down and it is like everybody is saying it is the worst of the three it is but it is still watchable unfortunately rob i didn't find in my mess i didn't found my bootleg i wanted to to see how the bootleg the spanish bootleg holds up to to Dude, this one this and, is why this is why alphabetization is important yeah, I, know. I know come on bro 
One day I'm yeah. going to come visit you in Germany, and your house better not be like a weird mess that only only it looks yeah. clean in your background. <laughs> I expect to be able to go through and look at all the titles. Um, you know, so I mean, this isn't Rob, perfect. Uh, actually, it's just a Blu-ray, but yeah. it's still, you yeah. know. But, but it is definitely, from my perspective, HD. Well, I have, I've watched it, and I've never had a feeling, oh, this is just DVD quality. Oh, no, no. It's HD quality. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Rob, true lies, a recommendation for me, even can speak to it perhaps this one is a better without the help of hdr dolby vision even even forcing the problems with the transfer even a little bit more so this could be a case where without the added help of high dynamic range it could look a little bit you know more stable than a little bit more of an up and down so this yeah. actually could be perhaps a little better if you just watch the Blu-ray to be to have it a little bo bit more more stable. You know? So it is still watchable, but it is the worst. But really, Rob, Aliens, give it a shot. I thought it worked for the movie. Strangely, okay, well, like okay, Showgirls, like Showgirls, Rob, <laughs> it worked for the movie. We know the vinegar syndrome of Showgirls is the faithful representation of that master, but the German one with the bolded colors, with removal of the grain to give it that Las Vegas glitz and glamour. Look. Yeah. There's it something really does. interesting about it. Plus, I love the media book of it, but I have to say yeah. the Showgirls release from Vinegar Syndrome is a banger. No. Yeah, um, totally. totally. I have to say, under the radar, now, yeah. people are going to say this might be sacrilegious, but one of my, I'm going to call it right away, one of my releases of the year, even though it's been previously released and it's only in 2K, but one of my releases of the year one of my favorite movies of all time in a steel book came out Ooh, amelie on the nice. back of the steel book they have the japanese poster art which by the way is hanging up uh in our room our movie room nice. um this is this is if you wanted to encapsulate a movie that best if you wanted to get to know my personality this movie is that i i saw this movie for the first time i didn't know anything about this movie and i was in sigis um i was actually in barcelona in sigis uh in 2001 and i had gone to sigis have free enterprise had its world premiere in sigis which is so the, the sigis sigis is a town that's about 20 kilometers south of barcelona on the mediterranean and that's where the sigis uh f film festival <laughs> is and it's my favorite film festival I've ever been to. It continues to be. I hope to go there with another movie soon. Maybe this coming October with White Devils. Who knows? Um, but I saw this movie there. And it was funny because I went and saw Kyushi Kurosawa's Pulse. I went and saw two movies. I went and saw Pulse. And then I went and saw Amelie, which I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck. But I'd seen posters. I'd seen this poster was everywhere in all the Barcelona train stations and stuff. So I'm like, I'm going to go see what this is. Dude, I was weeping like a baby in this movie in, with tears of joy. And um, But now here's the thing. Uh, as Jean-Pierre Genet, the director of this, explained and co-writer, explained in a recent YouTube video yeah. I saw, the producers, this film is heavily digitally color graded along with lord of the rings they use new software and this film is is heavily digitally color graded which meant that at the time they they didn't have 4k so the film was finished in 2k and as janet okay. explained it what they could have made was celluloid color separation masters so basically it's three strips of celluloid to preserve the color and if they had had celluloid they could have blown it up i mean they could have blown this up into um 4k if they wanted to but because it was an early it was f this movie came out in 2001 that it was early technology they didn't do that so unfortunately this is one yeah. of those movies that cannot have a 4k master however they took the 2k element and remaster this this nice. fucking looks absolutely stunning i awesome. mean yes it's awesome only it's only blu-ray it is stunning and it's chock-a-block full of special features they put all the legacy special features on there there's a great conversation with Genève back from 2001 there's a new intro they shot with him 
Uh, it's kind of short, but all the legacy special features, the storyboard comparisons, the commentary, everything is on this disc. And um, I really, I really love. Inside, you have the two windmills, the three windmills, right. um, and this is just a banger. It's a steel book, and I can't tell you this is one of my top ten favorite films of all time. Um, the way that it can, it combines whims, whimsy with emotion. I mean, this movie gets me every time. It's funny because I put it on last night to check out the transfer and to see. It sounds great. It looks great. It's phenomenal. Um, I love this movie so much. Awesome. And, uh, you know, a lot of people might not think that. It's funny because three of my favorite movies of all time, Amelie, All That Jazz, and All About Eve, start with A. So I'm, I'm, I, I'm not even, I'm in the first letter of the alphabet in my collection, and three of my favorite movies are already there. Almost, almost Famous. Oh, you four. Know? Almost Famous. Four. There you go. And Alien. So yeah. I'm telling you, maybe that's all I need is one letter of the alphabet. But if you have not seen this movie... Uh, I cannot recommend this. This this comes with my highest recommendation, but you have to be you have to be you have to be somebody that will buy into the the. Some people think it's a little too twee, twee for them. Those people are wrong, and I don't want to know them. But um, this film is one of my favorite films of all time. Yeah. Mwah. Chef's kiss, Amelie, and it's got a great steel book and this Japanese artwork I love. So there you go, folks. Bro as as much as we perhaps complain about the titles but we have to give credit special features are full you know oh my god very very few of the, the legacy new, new special doc. features yeah and the new dog with the true lies so in that com compartment they really excelled yeah and I, I you know what I'll, I'll i will rip on i will rip on the yeah. people at disney but i have to say uh bill hunt told me that the people that were working on these titles at Disney yeah. did their very best. They did their very best to make sure that all of the special features, all the legacy, that it probably was not easy to do because finding all the elements and all that. So yeah. a shout out, you got to give credit where credit is due. Def the people at Disney working on those titles made sure that we got most of the legacy special features that they yeah. could find. So kudos to Disney for that. Um, and because also, Aliens and the Abyss are a three disc set, you know? Yeah. A three yeah. Disc, disc set. Yeah. Great. So, That's really cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who goes first, Rob? I don't but, know. Uh, con considering you started with Emily. Uh, okay, I start, Rob. Go ahead. From the, com that, from the comedy, I already showed that title, Bildstör, the German comedy who did brought. Uh, uh, Released the eyes of my mother. I got another one, Rob, because he said, "Deeds, you gotta get this. This is a good feel movie. You gotta have it." And it was a little bit price reduced, and I finally bought it, Rob. But I haven't seen it. Come and see. Oh my God! You you didn't get the Criterion to that? Look at that, uh, no, dude. This is, this is the German one. You know, it's like the eyes of my mother. More. In wow. Like have you ever watched? Case. Have you ever watched that movie? No, Rob. No, I don't know the movie. Dude, but I heard from you, and I think, I think Terry recommended it. Dude, that's the feel-good yeah. movie of 2024. Yeah. For you. <laughs> they told me. They told me about it. <laughs> so you got the Blu-ray and the DVD, and uh, that movie is, is devastating. It's devastating. Oh, it's from 1980, 85. So we got a booklet. Come and see. So I'm really looking. Looking forward to it. And as with the eyes of my mother, if you want, you can, like Rob would do, take this off, glue it away. Yeah. And then it looks like... Unless it's got like a number or something, something special. On no, there. it's it's not num it's not numbered, Rob. It's more like a little bit of a protective, protective sleeve, I sure. would say. So uh, I got come and... See, finally, Rob, because it was was price reduced, and it's not even pornographic. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, actually, it's, uh, it's by, a really harsh movie. Three. Yeah, four by and it's four by three. So, Don't watch it if you're in a bad mood. Yeah, I have to to see when I can fit that movie. Rob, you showed this last week, and I will have to send it back because 
Delivery boy Ford. Oh, I can get it into the letterbox. If no. I it. Oh yes. man. Enough. It's not completely damaged, but I don't know if you can see it. It's oh. a little bit. You know, I got. That's paprika. paprika. By the way, that's yeah. a great steel book too. I love that steel book. I love that movie. Rest in peace, Satoshi Kon, Paranoia Agent. So 4K and Blu-ray. But this will go back, Rob, and I will get a new one. Because at first I thought, oh, no, it, it survived. And then I saw uh, Crooked here. Yeah, so this will go back. Next one, Cat in the Back. I saw the trailer actually in the theater. But I heard really not much about the movie. I don't know if it's out on streaming in the States. The German title is The Queen Mary. And... In the states, I believe it's the haunting of uh, Queen Mary. So, a little oh, okay. horror on a on a boat. This is a media book, Rob. This is a Blu-ray, and it comes with the movie The Winchesters, which actually, actually, I don't have, but I remember it. <laughs> the the, the uh, reviews were not not that great. So, really, get in the back. Wait a minute! If the, the reviews weren't Mary. that great, why'd you buy it? Not, 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 not for, for that movie, Rob. Oh, there are oh, two oh, movies oh. in it, you know. Okay. You got the Queen Mary, and they put in a sometimes splendid puts in a second movie, you know, right? To make the purchase a little bit more uh, worth your while. And they put, and it's always mostly over. I have the second movie already, you know. That's the problem. But now I finally got got one, which I didn't buy when it came out because I remember Rob Winchester wasn't wasn't that well, well received from from the reviews, yeah, but. For the price of getting this one and Winchester with it, so I'm really looking looking forward to this. I don't know if perhaps they shut it in the in the volume two, like uh, the show, which didn't get renewed. You know the how the, the, was it called now? I don't even know the name. God damn, God damn it! So Rob, the other one that you already showed is Monster Squad. That oh, you finally it. got it. That, that's a really nice disc. Really nice uh, disc. Three, three disc, disc in this package. So really, what more can you ask for, considering this title from Kino Lorber? It's everything you ever wanted. So this is a little bit of my first haul, Rob. I give it over to you. Well, you know, this uh, this uh, channel is unofficially sponsored by both Kino Lorber and Warner Premiere. And I did get some interesting stuff from them this week. Now, what? Uh, what's, this is really interesting. So I got this box set, and I was really interested to get this from Warner Archive. Did I say Warner Premiere? Uh, Warner Archive, mm. Warner Premiere. Yeah. So it's from Warner. Uh, Warner Premiere is is no Warner Premiere is their direct to video film division. Warner Archive, you know, is the George Feltenstein run home video division. So Warner <laughs> Warner Archive sent me. I was very curious about this. So this is a TV series called Colt Forty Five, and I'm like, does yeah. it star? Does it star uh, Billy D. Williams? No, it does not. Um, and I didn't know anything about this show. But it's a it's it's a sixty five episode western series, and I've been kind of on a western kick lately. Now listen to this: the enormous success of Warner Brothers Television hit series Cheyenne paved the way for more western series produced for ABC Television. In the fall of nineteen fifty seven, saw Warner Brothers TV premiere three new westerns, including Colt forty five a very loosely based adaptation of the 1950 feature film set in the American West of the 1870s. Colt 45 starred new newcomer Wade Preston as Christopher Colt, a giant of a man who works undercover on special assignment for the U S army intelligence corps to combat the lawlessness on the young country's frontier using the guise of a salesman for his family's arms manufacturing company, Colt travels alone, bringing law to the dangerous West at the barrel of his family's signature weapon, uh -huh. the Colt 45. An intelligence operative for the army, undercover. I mean, I, when I read this, I'm like, this is fucking catnip for me. 
And, you know, there's other great Westerns, like the Western Have Gun Will Travel, that uh, Paladin, Paladin, that Gene Roddenberry was involved with. Um, but I had never heard of this. And when, when I got See? the box, I was like, oh, my God. Now, uh, this looks incredible, as all Warner Archives uh, episode, uh, uh, things are. But this is what I love, that Warner Archive pulls something out of the archives that I had never heard of. And this was talk about Cat in the Bag. Now, am I going to... And it's three uh, discs, by the way, three Blu-rays. So I would and, assume um, it was on television back in the day, Rob, when you weren't interested in Western. No, it wasn't. Uh, this I'd never heard of this. This was never okay. airing. This was long forgotten. It has been gone. And this is what a lot of people go, well, why won't Ar Warner Archive put out like the Mosquito yeah. Coast? Or, Look, I know. Or the Butcher Boy. I want that. Or, uh, you know, B. Depp would tell you, where the hell's under the rainbow? They'll get to it. They'll get to it. But when Warner Archive, when, Fel when George Feltenstein puts out something like this, it's because it's good. So uh, I watched the first couple episodes. It is good. Yeah. And it's fascinating to watch. So, Wow. Uh, this was this was something that came from Warner Archive this week, and I was very very excited. So thank you, George. And again, that's why Warner Archive is great. Um, then of course I got a few discs from Kino Lorber. The most exciting that they sent me was Jean Moreau, the great French actress. Jean Moreau directed three movies. That's right. She directed three mo movies, including a documentary on Lillian Gish, the great screen star Lillian Gish. So these are, it's a two Blu-ray set. It's got Lumiere, yeah. the adolescent, and her Lillian Gish documentary. And, you know, only Kino Lorber would put this out. You know, I don't know how many people would want to buy this, but if you like Jean Moreau, and, you know, Jean Moreau, been in a lot of movies that we love here at Let's Get Physical Media. So it's great to have this. I didn't even know they were putting this out, but this is pretty dope. Oh. Um, and then on Blu-ray, uh, they, as I'm putting, I'm, I'm trying to stack these discs here before yeah. they fall over. They also put out this documentary, this Academy Award do nominee, Four Daughters, a documentary that I don't know much about, but um, it's supposed to be exhilarating. Again, Kino Lorber has been killing it with the crazy documentaries. Again, with their money laundering operation, I'm convinced a Mexican <laughs> drug cartel owns it. And I'm, I'm, you know, it makes me realize if I was Tony Montana and I was making all those Coke dollars, I would have bought a bunch of movies in the 80s and put them out because God bless Kino Lorber for doing this. I think it's awesome. And um, they also put out now, I understand a lot of people will get pissed because they're still putting yeah. out. They're still putting out uh, stuff on DVD. Because remember, as we've said, if you look at the beginning of every Let's Get Physical Media, we've got our pie chart here. Uh, here is the week ending on March 23rd, 2024. The DVD market, 59%, almost actually, let's round up to 60% of all the discs sold were DVD, Blu-ray, and then 4K makes up 15%. Because as we all know, I could have told you the collector market only ever really represented 20% of the audience anyway. But so we, we get some we get some wacky DVD titles, two genre titles, one a horror film from Spain called The Coffee Ooh. Table. That looks crazy. The Coffee Table. Now now um <laughs> here's some of the quotes on the back. Literally this is what they say. Fuck Undoubtedly, one of my favorite <laughs> horror movies of 2023, Terrifying, Will Haunt Your Dreams. Now, listen to what this movie is about. It's from Spain. And by the way, the yeah. Spanish, you can't go wrong, even if you have a cat in the bag. If if there's ever a horror film that comes from Spain. I'll get, get to one, Rob, later. Okay. Uh, if you ever come across a horror movie from Spain, I don't mean to be, you know, I don't mean to, uh, 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 what, what, what should you call it? Uh, ethnically, uh, but go with me on this. The Spanish, they know how to fucking make horror. Yeah, I'm just saying. Amando de Osorio, yeah. the Tombs of the Blind yeah. Dead movies. You know the the French are more for the red soup. You know, there's a lot of red soup. Yeah, the Spanish are more. You know, the the creep factor. You know, they are, yeah, they're yeah, great with the creep. Factor. The the Spanish know what's up though. But you gotta listen to what this is about. Huh. Yeah. 
Unspeakable horror meets the blackest of black comedy in this shocking tale of a couple, their newborn, and a coffee table. Now, for me, when I hear the words coffee table and movie, I think of Bruno Kirby saying, this stupid wagon wheel coffee table from When Harry Met Sally. I thought you liked it. I was being nice. Anyway, um, Jesus, or Jesus and Maria, to celebrate their new baby, buy a trashy, fake, gold-embossed glass table held up by four breast-bearing female figures. Guaranteed to bring happiness to their family by the smarmy salesman, the couple finds instead that it brings nothing but horror. I mean, if anybody can make a horror movie a about table. a coffee table held up by naked chicks or with boobs, the Spanish can do it. So here we are, the coffee table coming at you from Kino Lorber. Then, then a movie that was at Fantasia called Skin Deep, which is a body swap movie. Yeah. And it's witty, provocative. Some, it's some a body are... swap film with a difference. Now listen to this. Somehow it feels, feels familiar, but I'm not sure. Um, an unexpected and moving portrait of love rooted in acceptance. I think this has to do with a body swap movie where somebody might be changing their gender. Don't know. But it was at Fantasia. And uh, again, movie I knew nothing about. But here are two genre titles that I'm proud to have in my collection. Can't wait to watch them. Rob, should, should me. the Spanish horror movie feature a coffee table on, on the cover? Yeah, can you show the cover again, Rob? I can show the cover again. Okay, let me ask you this. If you saw a, a, a picture of a coffee table on a cover or this yeah, cover. Exactly. I take this cover, of course, Rob. You know, I mean... <laughs> Maybe if you don't get your, would, maybe would that's think, what you look what, like what? if you don't get your coffee in the morning. Yeah, could be. <laughs> you never know. What has this to do with a coffee table? Great cover. I don't know. Great it's cover. a great cover. And then yeah. finally, the final uh, thing. Uh, uh, this is a uh, underdog, the curiously optimistic tale of T Doug Butler. You've got to go through hell to get to heaven. This was a slam dance movie. Um, it is. It is um, illuminates the emotional toil of being a farmer today and the deep resilience, optimism, and joy that also comes with rural like life. Doug Butler is a hard scrabble Vermont dairy farmer with an offbeat passion, dog mushing. He likes to mush like mush, you know, racing dogs with a sled. They pull a sled. So I'm just saying... I don't know what this documentary is about, but Kino Lorber is always delivering the goods when it comes to documentaries. So um, I have to tell you that I want to I want to thank Matt at Kino Lorber in publicity. Not only did he get me that great interview with Greg Lemley to talk about their documentary only in theaters, but because of him, I keep getting these boxes from Kino Lorber that between you know last week I got I got North Dallas Forty in four K, I got Changing Lanes in four K. And then I get a dog mushing documentary the next week. So thank you, Kino Lorber. You never know. Sometimes and, everything aligns. And I want to I want to talk to somebody, Kino Lorber, about their business practices and uh, how I too can start a money laundering operation by releasing films from all over the world and in 4K. So thank you. I appreciate that. So do just, you want to see? Just, you want to what? Yeah. Uh, just quick, Rob. One of my Instagram followers, uh, followers reminded me that you last week on the news section, you showed a movie called Footprints. And you have this movie already, Rob. It is in the psychotic woman box. Uh, oh, yes. You it know what? One of the, it is one of the movies in the, in the uh, psychotic woman. It is true. Uh, that is true. And I, I, somebody told me that, and I didn't even realize that because I haven't even watched that movie yet, so I didn't even know it. Yeah. So that's uh, good. Because now it's getting a single release later. Yes, it is. Yeah. You know what else I got this week? Okay, I got sure. this. Do you know Ooh. what this is? This is from our friend David Kokel. Nice. David. David Kokel. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I open this up and it says, uh, handle yeah. carefully, drawing smudges easily. Ooh. So I did open this already. I've already looked at yeah. it. But I did open it carefully. Carefully. Yeah. 
So carefully. Uh, so uh, it is. It is uh, uh, apparently a, uh, uh, he's going to do this as a movie poster or yeah. something. It's you and I. Uh, okay. We're digital warriors with Cat and Keisha. Disc Wars. So it's a David Kokel drawing. Nice. It's original. <laughs> nice, David. <laughs> I'll get it framed. How come you get headphones yeah, and I don't, though? Expect me right, David. <laughs> it's good. So, David, thank you for good. this drawing. Nice. I very much appreciate it. I'm going to get it framed. Um, although I look old in this drawing. What can I say? Uh, of course, I am old. It's fine. I can look old. I, I, I have no problem looking my age. I think I still have a youthful exuberance. It carries me through. And I have a full head of hair. Just kidding. I mean, nice, I, Rob, I mean, nice, you know, rub nice. it in. Nice, rub it in. So I've got a couple more, but yeah. I, I can hold off. You want to show more? Uh, uh, I would say Rob goes through the super chats that we got. So super far. chats. Good. Okay, you want to see some super chats? Let's see. I don't even know if we have any. I have, uh, Irene Jobson. Irene Jobson. Let me says, guess, Rob. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Guess, happy birthday, R and B. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Tom Jr. Jackson says, yeah. you're welcome for the pick. Let's show that again. My Pharaoh physical media pick from Tom Jr. Jackson. I love when people make these. They pick the most flattering expressions. They make me look good. I, I want to thank you for that. No, it's great. It's a great picture. I'm proud to have it on the show. Um, so that's great. Um, Martino, Martino Simone, who has filled up this room with, you can't see it, but, oh, wait, maybe, oh, you can't because it's too... Playmobil, actually the DB5s up there. I got Magnum PI. I got the A-Team van. I got the Bird of Prey. I got the Enterprise up there. I am playmobile out. Actually, I'm not. There's always more Playmobil to get. Martino has gifted 10 Burnett Work memberships, which is very cool. Uh, Dr. Jacked became a new member of the channel. So did Julian uh, Briscusco. Briscusco? Briscusco? Julian, welcome. Uh, B Depp, B Depp says, "Did you hear reactions to the Megal Megalopolis screening? The film will be a tough sell, as it has zero commercial prospects. Come on, it's Coppola. Someone definitely will. No, I've heard a lot of great things. Uh, what what we're discussing here is, of course, uh, why am I just looking at myself? Uh, Francis Ford Coppola's self financed passion project yeah. that he's wanted to make for twenty years. Megalopolis screened for distributors and people in uh, at Universal City Walk this week, um, and people got to see it. The entire industry turned out to check it out. Hopefully, yeah. it will get some great distribution. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be uh, a hugely commercial film. I wouldn't imagine, but it's Francis Coppola. He financed it the same way he pretty much financed Apocalypse Now. So I'm very excited. Um, Justin, but this was not a test screening, Rob. Just a normal screening. This was not. not no, a it was a screening. yeah. It was a normal. It was a screening for distributors and studio executives. Yeah, okay. So uh, everybody in Hollywood who's who's anybody, the real power brokers were there. Uh, Justin Toner, and thank you for this. Justin Toner says, "Hi guys, two yeah. great physical media sales people should be aware of. Kino Lorber has a March Madness sale going on, and Arrow." Has an Easter sale on their website. Lots of titles up to 50% off. I'm seeing Godzilla X Kong nice. today. Nice. So that's, uh, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out, Justin. And uh, yeah, they've, and they've, they've announced, uh, Arrow's announced some banger releases coming. So check those out. We're going to talk about those a little later. Um, so there we go. There's uh, okay. that. We're caught up on Super Chats. And if anybody wants to send in more, hey, you can. We will answer them. We are here for you. You, yeah. So, by the way, the for those new members, time, yeah, for those new members of the channel, every week or uh, uh, bi-weekly, pardon Two me, weeks. twice a month, we have member chats where I hang out with everybody for a couple hours. Actually, it's never a couple hours; it's four or five hours. Let's see, who are, who are we kidding? A couple hours, and um, we um, chat. You can ask me anything. Yeah. We can you can say whatever you want, and I will answer you in the best to the best of my ability. So, Rob, my last four titles for this week. First one, speaking of Hong Kong action, uh, with Michelle Yeoh. This one, I think she did after Supercop with Jackie Chan. It's just called 
Mega Cup. Yeah. German one. And Cynthia Lasta is in it <laughs> again. And Jackie Chan too, but he seems to have, if that's him, just a little bit of a small room as as a woman, it seems. So Mega Cup, I actually didn't check the original title. I just got it two two weeks. Uh, two two hours ago I got this title. Then speaking Rob of Spanish horror that I quite enjoyed and it's called The Boogeyman Origins. Okay. Is that like a, a sequel to uh to the Boogeyman? No, it has You can't to do with hide the, from him. Uh, from so the eighties. It's nothing to do with the with the Vinegar Syndrome put it out movie. So this is a Spanish one. Has a little bit of a, I would say, cheaper screeper swipe, considering the antagonist. He collects children who feels a little bit guilty about something. And every few years he comes back to get another batch of kids who then disappears. You know, it's got a little bit of a, of course, Stranger Things vibe here, perhaps. But I quite enjoyed it. Quite enjoyed it because, like you said, considering the creep factor, the Spanish know what... They are doing quite enjoyed it. The Boogeyman Origins. Get in the back. The next one, Rob. It's just called Revenge. We'll find you. Palido. And it says on the back, four fans for revenge action movies like 96 Hours, John Wick, or The Equalizer. So perhaps, perhaps good. Good in the cat in the back, Rob. It's uh, even featured, Rob. Jeff Fahey is in this movie. Nice. So at least. I've directed Jeff Fahey. Well, um, where Rob help me out? He was in an episode of Femme Fatales that I directed. Oh, nice! You awesome. know, and now Rob, it's getting a little bit problematic. You have to help me out. Uh oh! Because I have a, I have a sick mind, Rob. I have a sick mind. No. And I will say the American title. Perhaps you know the movie, Rob. It's an older one, but it features the original Swedish title. It's a Swedish movie. And if I put one letter wrong, Rob, that could go wrong with my English pronunciation. Oh, so I will I, say the, oh. the original title. The original okay. title is Show Me Love. I don't know if you know the title Show Me Love. And this is the original Swedish title, Rob. Fucking them all. So, yeah. And Rob, what do I think? Of course, one of the girls... Is that, a, is that a prequel to Blue is the Warmest Color? Rob, you and I... You and I, sir, park our shuttle career in the same shuttle bay. <laughs> Rob, Emil is a town in Sweden. It's oh. not the name of one of the girls. <laughs> oh, okay. At <laughs> first, see, at, how, at how, first how, how I, how thought it was, work, I thought it was fucking anal, but I couldn't see. I thought the M <laughs> it was an N. You said it, Rob. You and I'm like, what's wrong with that? Yeah. <laughs> you said it, Rob. So it's from 1998. Is that a media really book? Enjoyed it. Is that a media yeah, book? It's, it's a, yeah, exactly. It's a media book. I love. Rob, I love that Germany will just put this stuff out. Ger Why is it that Europeans? You know, you're, I've always, I've often said that Europeans have been human beings much longer than Americans have. Yeah. So Europeans is, can, are, are much more comfortable with humanity than. Uh, of course, you're also more comfortable with exterminating humanity. But I'm just saying that Americans are... I'm just kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. Hey, I mean, you've been, you've, been huma you've been human beings a lot longer than we Americans have. But we would, we're not progressive enough to put fucking on the front of our physical media. Yeah. Uh, the, the U.S. title, Rob, is Show Me Love. And the German title is actually Raus aus Amal, which would be translated, get the hell out of... Amal. So Amal is actually a Swedish little town and we have uh, Elin here and we have Agnes and Agnes is of course in love with Elin but Elin has more I think for the boys at the beginning. Really nice movie Rob but Jimmy C. Rob would hate that transfer because it's a 16 millimeter sh uh, shoot so really grainy. I loved how the transfer worked out. But and it's then, 16 millimeter. Rob, I, I bet yeah, it looks great. Millimeter. Yeah, but Jimmy C would hate how the movie looks, Rob. <laughs> and then I did uh, uh, put on the bonus features, Rob, and the first one started with the Arrow logo. I thought, oh, okay, there are uh, features, bonus features from the Arrow. So I thought, 
the movie would have an arrow release in the states you know under show me love right and then i went, did uh, go to blu-ray.com show me love okay i found the title and i even found a review for the blu-ray but the blu-ray you can't find on amazon it seems like not even that it is out of print, print title. OOP. No, that, that is uh, perhaps really expensive now to get. No, it doesn't show up at all. Like it was actually never even released on Blu ray. It seemed strange to me. Even in the really? UK, you, you, you can only find it on DVD. But so I guess Arrow can't show you love at all. Yeah. So perhaps it seems to me almost like the uh, Blu ray.com got perhaps a pre release of the title hmm. for a review. And then the title perhaps got pulled because I couldn't find an American or a UK Blu-ray of their title, even if one of the Bozo's features starts with the Arrow logo, you know? Wow, in the that's wild. So, yeah, that's wild. And after Emil, it's a town, <laughs> not, not one of those, those girls, the name of those girls. That's how I know how the... How, how, how the locations of, of our planet. And then, Rob, now I'm looking really forward to Lilia Forever because this is the same director. Oh, really? Wow, okay. The movie. And, Rob, what I did found out about with the bonus features, the actress who plays Elin is actually then the first one of the ADs, assistant directors, on this movie. <laughs> wow. Which came out later, you know. So this, this was uh, uh, then. Now it makes sense that those movies. Came That's like out. John Appleus, who played Martin in George Romero's Martin, became the casting director on Dawn of the Dead. Keep yeah. it in the family. Exactly. Keep it in the family. So, only through skipping through the bonus features, I did find that out, Rob. That she was an assistant director on that movie. So it's from the same director. But really, Rob, nice movie. It is. You can rent it on Amazon in the States. Paul Allen Brunotto looked it up for 99 cents. Show Me Love is the is the English, the original, uh, the US title. Show Me Love. Wow. Really, I, just, really I wish they I wish they'd cool. kept the uh, the original title, but Americans don't know anything about world geography, so it would have been lost on them. But Rob, the American title is still a little bit fitting too, because Show Me Love, the song from Robin, is oh, in the okay. end credits. Okay. You know? So it, it fits too. It fits too. Really nice movie. Really nice movie. But Jimmy C would hate a transfer. You know? <laughs> He's never made a movie in 16 millimeter. What does he know? <laughs> he would, God damn it. He would get rid of that, that 16 millimeter crane. Insane. Really, really nice movie. Recommendation from me. So uh, now I'm really looking forward to the other one that the director made. Let me just look up his name. Nice cover, by the Lucas, way. Lucas Mudis, Mudison is the director. Hmm. Really looking forward to this one. So this was my whole rock for this Well, I, I got a couple more. Yeah. Okay. Okay, just in time for Easter, you know that I love the devil. I love Satan. Totally. I love possession. Yeah. You and your cult. I love yeah. I love devil cults. I mean I, I can never join one because you know I'm Jewish and we don't really have a devil. We've got Osmodius, but you know, it's too maybe that's why I like the devil so much. I mean, I started going to church with my Catholic friend. Jeff Swafford, when I was a little kid, I'm like, you know what? First line of defense right here. Um, this movie, and by the way, Shudder on Shudder, but this movie is fucking great. And I had to get this. Where Ooh, evil mine, lurks. Mine, mine is underway, Rob. Bro, this movie is dope. I mean, so the, the so possession is a disease or whatever. You know what? I... I this movie is so good. This has bonus features. And again, this was on, again, Shudder. I wish they didn't have to put certified yeah. fresh, whatever. But sometimes Shudder discs come with an O-ring, and sometimes they don't. This has an O-ring. Doesn't have a reversible cover, but there's some. Spe there's a behind-the-scenes photo gallery. Just happy to have this. I really like this movie a lot. Is this, Ar is this Argentine? It lived up, Argentine. It lived up to the hype. That it got. You know, IFC uh, put this out. And IFC yeah. has Late Night with the Devil with in Devil. theaters now, which is awesome. Um, and uh, it, it, it had their biggest opening, theatrical opening ever last weekend um, with David Desmalchin. 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 And just before the show, Rob, I watched a review from Jeremy Chance for oh, uh, Late Night with the Devil. I saw that drop. I haven't watched it yet. 
and, and he totally liked the movie. And at the, be the beginning of his review, he said, worth buying on Blu-ray. And then he got sad, considering is Amazon. He said, is Amazon really the last place where I can get my physical media? Perhaps, perhaps I should change it. He said that perhaps I should change it to, to DVD. <laughs> Well, you know, no diabolic DVD. You got to go to the retailers. I mean, I, I'm, I'm th Amazon's. I mean, still they're okay. Like they got this to me, but I'm tired of getting delays. I'm tired of getting anyway. But so this, this is an incredible nice. horror film. Um, yeah, totally. You know, I really like this modern. You know, there's some bangers. A lot of great horror movies, and, and especially Rob, that that one scene where you Ugh. know what is coming up. You know it, but but I got. But I jumped, nevertheless. But I jumped, nevertheless. Even if I know where get evil away, lurks. Get away! Get away from the dog. Really good. Get away from the dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get away from the dog. God damn it! And now uh, I got to give it up for Paramount. You know, it, yeah. it's really interesting because Paramount titles are being released by Kino Lorber. Like North Dallas Forty is a Paramount title. Oh, Kino has Kino released uh, Indecent Proposal. Which is a Paramount title. They release it in 4K, but Paramount didn't release it. Like I don't, I don't get it. But when Paramount does decide, you know, they've been releasing their Blu-rays, and if they sell well, then they release the 4K, which I don't quite understand. I don't get it. But gotta give it up for Paramount because those people at Paramount, even though that studio is going down and they're still making that horrible modern Star Trek swill, and they're gaslighting the fans or whatever. But Primal Gear. In 4K, I right. look. I love psychos and horror and but, legal dramas. But Rob, I, I think they didn't put out the Blu-ray first, considering Crime of Yeah, right? I don't think they did, but but uh, okay. not not with this one. But really you know, every time I see them. But here's what I love about these. So first, they come with an O-ring. I'm not too keen on this packaging, but the O-ring. Look at that, a fold-out O-ring with the original Giant. key art. Giant. And then they give you a reversible cover, not with key art, but with stills. Ooh, nice. reversible cover, Ooh. right? So um, a little bit light, like come and see here. Yeah. So these are great packages. Although you have to, you know, every time you touch it, you have to wipe your fingerprints off. Don't care. Um, I love this movie. This movie, if you've never seen this film, it has a great ending. I love this film. And Laura Linney, who's been sexy for twenty-five years. You go, Laura Linney. She's in this, and uh, Richard Gere, also been sexy for 50 years. We're going to get to Richard Gere at the news section because there's a banger coming out from Arrow. Um, Primal Gear. Nice. You know, it's like it's like my friend Eliana. She, she, she's like, I, I told her, oh, so you, she goes, do you think that I should get the rad steelbook? <laughs> and I said, yeah, you told, told us. yeah, I said that last week. And I'm like, what do you mean, the rad? And she goes, it's not. I said, you should totally get the Rad Steelbook. She goes, no, no, it's called the Raid. And I'm like, no, it's called the Rad. And the second one's called the Rad 2 Even Radder. And she's like correcting me. What is with people now? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. And by the way, uh, in case you forget, look, it says it right there. It says the Rad. The Rad. <laughs> Rad, as in radical, as you can't get more radical than this. And I'm waiting to get the Rad 2 where it says the Rad 2 even radder. This was a great up upgrade from... Oh, my God. That First of all, can we just talk about how great the Rad is? Yeah, totally. It is so rad. But, but it wasn't a good-looking movie, but I was blown away. As, as it... Well, how can it look... This way, no, dude. It no. looks so good. First of all, I watched that movie, and I don't even know how they got insurance. They probably didn't get insurance. Yeah. There's stuff no. that happens in that movie. I'm like, that person died. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's like watching John Woo movies where you know they would do anything. Hard boiled, the killer, better tomorrow. Anyway, it's the rad. Just so you people, if you don't know what the rad is, I don't. I, if I have to explain it to you. You haven't seen the movie because anyone who's seen the movie goes, "You're right, that is the rad." Just saying, <laughs> apropos of nothing. Yeah. So, where are we at now, Deets? What's up? Uh, I finished Rob this week. You finished it already last week. Three body problem. Love the show. I love the show. I know 
There are some folks out there who didn't find it that thrilling. I would rate it 8.5 out of 10. A little bit of a drop because I didn't get a really juicy cliffhanger. I wanted to have a juicy cliffhanger. Because the episodes always had a little bit of a nice cliffhanger. But the last one was a little bit... I would have loved... It, feel, it felt like, oh, there are two episodes left in the first season. Somehow, you know. But I totally love the show. And Rob, the boat scene. Boat Dude, that's scene, juicy. That's juicy. With you mean the nanofiber scene, the exactly. nanofibers. That's one. That was one of those scenes where <laughs> I have seen a lot in my in my time. Well, there's a movie called Go. You know, Ghost Ship does something similar to that at the beginning, yeah. but not like and, this. And, at first, Rob, I was just under the imagination they would just cut. You know, the bottom half. Of the ship, you know, to no, because they have they have they have all bottom. kinds of nanofibers. That's why the things come up. And I was uh 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 uh. Okay, I'm I'm in I'm in. I love I love the show. I had a great great. I time. loved but it I too. Have no, I have not I have not read the book, but I'm now Rob, really looking forward actually to perhaps watch the Chinese one, which is on Peacock. As far yeah, as it's on Peacock. Yeah, it's on Amazon too. I think. So I, I really was thinking, okay, perhaps I checked the the the, the Netflix segment. show. It, it goes into the second book and a little yeah, bit the, of the third book too. So, but oh, okay, okay. The Chinese show is a lot more drawn out, but it only deals yeah. with book yeah. one. But it's worth watching. Okay. It's yeah. worth watching. And I totally, totally was thinking, okay, what is what about that Will character? This is Kenza. Why is he still important? And then. Okay, he's important. <laughs> send out, send out, send out the stuff. <laughs> Don't want to give anything away, Absolutely. dude. You know yeah, what? Yeah. I mean, it, you could do a sequel to Aniara, my favorite Swedish science fiction movie. Yeah, there you go, Rob. <laughs> Six thousand years <laughs> later. <laughs> Hello. It's like you said, Rob. The universe will kill you. You know, <laughs> God, it, it you, will. If you are making a, a little bit of a mistake. You're off. You're yeah. off course. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and like I said, Rob, never. If you but dial ET, Rob, don't read them Red Riding Hood. You know. And that scene, Rob, was on the one hand for me totally funny. Uh, hello, hello, Lord, hello. You know. <laughs> but yeah, but you can feel the threat immediately too. You know, it was funny. <laughs> you could feel, oh, 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 what, what, what has he done? You know. Oh, we have to. We have to think about it that because you're all liars, you're all liars. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. was so great. Oh, Lord, Lord, come back to me. Great, I, I loved it. Great, great show on for one at least. I can't believe really that my Rob observatory, by the way, had a lot of leaks yeah. in it. I thought they were all uh, fixed. Yeah, they're not. They're they're. Oh my God, there's it. It, it is this. It's terrible. This it has been endlessly raining. I'm so upset. Un unbelievable, unbelievable. So where do we go, Rob? Or do you, if you have to fix something, Rob, I can do the live chat. Do the live chat, <laughs> would you please? Okay. Do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can skip off then for a moment. So people, previously on Let's Get Physical Media, which means last week, Peter Cunningham, some horrible news. My 4K player stopped working and. Literally every store where I live no longer sells players. I guess I need to buy it online. And do you have any suggestions? Well, uh, Peter, just look around. Go for, you know, the naming players with Panasonic, Sony. You should be finding an, a new player online. Admiral, considering my team, Saarbrücken is playing next week on Tuesday. The important game against the local local derby. Albedal says just make the playground as bad to play <laughs> that that none can play on it, and Saarbrücken will win. What Albedal means: the last two games they botched the new the new playground, which can hold any water, just like the observatory can hold any water, and it was more like a water ball than football the last two games so fingers crossed that it won't rain on tuesday kanto 007 you're absolutely right as usual rob uh, about lack of planet of the apes on disney plus 
Tom Jr. Jackson, I think the Chinese version is on Peacock considering three-body problem. And I think I need to watch the Chinese version. Adventure Square, so late night with the devil at Fantasia. And it was terrific. Can't wait for its physical media release. And as I said, Jeremy Charles think it's worth buying and owning on physical media. Mob, 1901. Nice French new genre horror. Martyrs is my favorite. Totally agree. Under Sick, 38. Inside is a horror masterpiece. And oh my God, the twist. And he says, Martyrs rules. Totally agree. Mr. Gonzal, 09. Green Room. Maybe I check that one out. You should do that. Alpital. We knew all along Patrick Stewart is a skinhead, considering Green Room. Mr. Gonzalo 9, I have the Abyss Aliens on 4K. They are awesome looking. Unfortunately, True Lies hasn't arrived yet. But it will. But it will. GA, I've had to cut back on buying 4Ks, etc. I was spending too much money. Too nice were parked our shuttlecraft in the same shuttle bay. Considering last week we were a little bit confused, considering location, because I don't know that Emil was a city, little, a small town in Sweden, and we were not sure about the island situation, but people in the live chat help us out. Deadpool Red Suit, North Island is part of the UK. South Island is part of Europe. Bang said the same. UK is England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Deadpool Red Suit, considering Aquaman 2. I watched The Last Kingdom two nights ago. Total garbage. The man's fourth Aquaman sequel wasn't too bad. And Unlimited Power Set. I like the second Aquaman more than the first, actually. Oh, okay. Different, different opinions here for Aquaman 2. Gary Smith, I am not buying any movies where it's possible the main character can come out of the TV of the out of the TV and grab me and he's speaking of course of the ring box set slice night Catherine is here he says she said i managed to get the four case of aliens the abyss and true lies after striking out at many online retailers nice you got all free and there's no way around around the free does Plato awesome that drop Shares his shares a birthday with William Shatner, considering every day is Rob's birthday. So that is actually fitting. Uh, video under D93, Rob getting rolling on Free Enterprise 2 before, before it's too late. Uh, GA, considering the William Shatner movie that Rob showed uh, last week, Impulse, Impulse was the title. Oh my God, he is horrible in this. The worst performance. I've ever seen by a major actor. Come on, Rob. We know you love Bill, but he is not great by any stretch. Level B, lovable, bad. Okay. And Big This Energy says, William Shatner is the godfather of good Canadian kids. Goddamn right he is. <laughs> and Albital says, bring Shatner to the show or it's too late. Unbelievable. 90, 93. Uh, 93. Unbelievable. Video under D. Did inspired me to watch all those YA book film movies, Hunger Games 1, 2, Maze Runner movies, and the host are the good ones. The first Hunger Games better than the second one, and Miles better than 3 and 4. B Dep, love KMFDM. And uh, <laughs> do you know what they are, Dieter? Do you know what KM Def uh, can you know KMFDM yet? Rob, I looked it up and why i was confused is the english wording that you said is the correct one but the german translation actually the two main words are wrong they need to change that so this was completely wrong well wait i have it here it says here this was google kein mehrheit für die mitleid rob i was confused because that doesn't make any sense at all it ah. needs to say kein Kein Mitleid für die Mehrheit. So those two words has completely switched. But you said it in English, correct. You know, no pity for the majority. That is correct English. But here it was completely wrong and I was totally confused. I thought this make, doesn't make any sense here. You know, 
because that's Plato said, no majority for the pity is different from saying no pity for the majority. Exactly. So I have, have uh, uh, look, look them up a little bit, Rob. And Tim N said, Rob sure knows how to butcher the German language, just as I know how to butcher English, Tim. So we are always balancing everything out here. Sin uh, hat we kein go. Angst. Sin liebt. Kein Angst. Ja. Sin tot. <laughs> ja. That's on the that's on the La Femme Nikita poster, which we'll get to later. Where I know, oh, I know, I know. Yeah, we're talking okay. about, I we're talking about. Come on, Bidep, lol. Dieter can't even say it. Yeah, because I was confused. Oh, this doesn't make any sense. Can can me add for the midnight? What are they talking about? Uh, Tim Hens said, "There, Dietz translated it more accurately. <laughs> At least I tried." Then Paul and uh, Olin Punotorop, I did send you a picture, and then I remembered. Considering a CED player, I used Paul M. Brunotto says I used to own a CED player in 1980. It started my physical media collecting, which me and my brother owned hundreds of them. And I think Rob, I did see one of those players, perhaps in a movie, because he did send me that picture of the Star Wars. And then I thought, yeah, I've seen that, that thick box that he put in and then put out. Then I remember perhaps seen it in a in a movie somewhere. My T. Germans can't play football, and he said, "Just kidding." Saarbrücken <laughs> football club Saarbrücken. Yeah, you, you you got lucky there, Mike. Uh, T. Brogu Jules Priest is one of my favorite bands. Mine too. Albital Reborn with Puck was pretty mad. I quite enjoyed Albital Reborn, and I quite enjoyed this new one, the One Percenter Warrior. Tim Hens says, "Wait, let me just." To get out here, Cynthia Laster, who is in this movie, Cynthia Laster sounds like a poor name. You're not completely wrong on that on that front. Brian Knight, Robert, just tried to get onto your post singularity website, and there is an error message. Rob, is the website? It's uh, we're we're working on that because we are re revamping everything for the launch of Imagination Connoisseurs Unlimited and our crowdfunding campaign for the audio drama okay nice so uh yeah and speaking rob i think we did perhaps a little bit of a mistake considering the contagion 4k because somebody i think on instagram uh did remind me it seems rob the contagion 4k is not from warner itself it is from a different studio at least on the amazon website it says really? it's from a different different studio it's not from warner itself so perhaps that's why the cover is so lame under dumb yeah it's it doesn't say warner rob it doesn't it said a totally different studio that i have never heard of but andy h says i don't huh. know if you have checked this rob he says the contagion 4k transfer is spectacular he said you know so, and that's, well, Dieter, what, it just so what, happens what, it just so happens that I have it right what? here. So as I'm yeah. looking, so uh, not that we butcher, uh, not butcher, but giving Warner flag for something that didn't. It does happen. have the Warner Brothers logo on the side. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. As I look on the disc, that, that's strange. Rob. Uh, when you have the time, Rob, nope, go to nope, Amazon. Nope. This is Warner Brothers. Warner HD. Okay. Okay. Then it this is strange, Rob, because uh, it was in the comments. Now I remember, Rob. It was in the comment section of last week's show, where somebody said it, it, it was even a um, made-on-demand title, which was strange to me. Warner Brothers made-on-demand made title. Four uh, K. I. No, I mean and, this. This uh, is a. This is a Warner Brothers title. Okay. For okay. sure. Okay. For sure. Nice. For sure. So, and Andy H says, Rob, the Contagion 4K transfer is spectacular, which is the most important. By the way, this movie has a banger soundtrack. Um, if you want to hear my great soundtrack playlist, which is very eclectic, I direct all of you to my Spotify and go look for the playlist Soundtracking into the Solar Winds. And you'll actually hear a track from this soundtrack. Uh, it's a very eclectic. It you know it's got it uh, yeah it has a few Star Wars and Lord of the Rings tracks but mostly it's tracks from a bunch of other movies because everyone's heard those so it's an eclectic but if you want to hear some of this this has a great score so 
Nice. Uh, considering those cover, uh, the Ains Seaborn says, makes it look like a poor alien abduction movie. He's not yeah, there. it's not it's right. it's it's really. But but you know what? As we all know, I mean, as I showed last week, the difference. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I just want to point this out. Why would anybody buy this? Why would anybody buy this? And I know they're leaning into the COVID thing, how we all wore masks. But, I mean, talk about a star cell. There's so many stars in this movie. And and people, this looks like a fucking Z-grade B movie. This is Steven fucking Soderbergh, man. Come on, bruh. I mean, this is, who, this is, this is why Hollywood's failing. Because all the fucking idiots that work at the studios now don't know, they don't know anything about the product they're selling. I mean, it's so frustrating. Shit, man, you've got people like George Feltenstein. Feltenstein would look at this and go, uh, no, that's not going to be the cover of that movie. No. I mean, God, it's so, it's so angering. It's just, ugh. And I love this movie. I love this movie. I mean, you know what's so funny, too? Warner Brothers, what they should have done is they should have done, and I know money-wise they can't, they should have done like an outbreak and contagion. They know that Barbenheimer works. Outbreak, you know, uh, Wolfgang Peterson's outbreak and contagion. Not Outbreak is, I, I think outbreak and contagion are not like the greatest movie. It's not Gone with the Fucking Wind. It's not... You know, all about Eve. It's not Sunset Boulevard. But if you want to watch movies about diseases, Contagion and Outbreak is a banger double feature. And Warner Brothers should, Warner, especially in the wake of COVID, you've seen Barbenheimer, you know, although those are two different movies. Watch a movie about the pandemic you just lived through. But whatever. Well, you know what? You know what happens when there's a contagion? You get an outbreak. Bum bum bum. I'm just saying. Box it with, with, with both uh, titles. And the Roadhouse remake was on Amazon. Lord Toth, Roadhouse was better than I thought it would be. Lord Toth, you and I park or shuttle grab in the same shuttle bay. Kanto 007. Oh my god, Roadhouse, I switched it off. So there were. Different takes on it. Tom Jr. Jackson, Roadhouse was really fun movie. I had a good time watching it. I watched it twice, and I think they might have set up a sequel. Well, let's let's. Uh, Did you watch Roadhouse? It. Yeah, I quite enjoyed it, Rob. I quite enjoyed it. It was fun, I but but you know, I, I I didn't I didn't like you always thinking about oh my god, where did they spend their money? Do you want to know where they spent their money, Rob? Do you know how much uh, Conor McGregor got for the movie? Mm mm. 5.5 million. No that way. Your money. Yes. Well, the movie that still costs $85 million, dude. That's, that's your, your first 5 million <laughs> gone there. <Rob. laughs> uh, Ishai, I'd rather watch the original again. And uh, 8, 808 Physical Media, OCD on a terrible 4K cover, speaking on Contagion. And Kenneth Colton, I fell asleep. After 30 minutes of Rodos. How could that be? Kenneth. Uh, Cyfax, first hour was fine. And the fights were pretty legit. But goddamn, those CGI car scenes were sci-fi networks BS. Kenneth Colton. Is three body problem worth watching? From my perspective, yes, it is. But like Chris Gore said, you have to get past the first one, two, two episodes to get mm -hmm. a little bit into, into it. But like Chris Gore said, here uh, you have mystery boxes, which will pay off. You know, you don't get more mystery boxes and more mystery boxes. No, you will get get answer to the stuff. And I'm caught up, Rob, with Shogun. And Kenneth Golden said Shogun is the best show on TV. Secular Monk. It was a decent remake of Manchurian Candidate. Rob, you showed the title last week. Yeah. The original, the original is much better, though. Nice. Secular Monk. Love those cat in the bags. Aaron Taylor, the Johnson, got the true layers 4K as someone that has only seen the film on VHS TV and DVD. I was happy with the presentation. 
was laughing at how obvious Arnie Stundouble is in some scenes. Yeah, it is noticeable. Uh, Admiral, the first kingdom, I showed Kingdom 2 last week, says was kind of average. I quite enjoyed it. No need for the second for me. Uh, and I showed Memories of Murder, the 4K last week. There's really nice Korean stuff as usual. Great movie. How much is the fish? It was was kind, kind of a little bit not. It was it was not a schnäppchen, Alpinhal. Uh, and Alpinhal says, wasn't there a French 4K already, Dina? I think you're right, but oftentimes I actually don't count the French 4K because often they never even come with English subtitles, so they immediately I forget about. Oh come on, you don't movies. like the frogs because of World War Two. Come on. Come on. You had to go there again, Rob. You had to go there again. <laughs> uh, we, we, we beat them in, 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 in f football last, last weekend. <laughs> Aaron Taylor, I love the Abyss. Great presentation. As with True Lies, I've only seen this on, like I said, TV, VHS, and DVD. Secular Monk, I have True Lies and the Abyss. I thought they were all right. Okay. Walter Whitewalker, is that a schnauzer in the background? And then later goes, he goes, Rob. I only ask because I look forward to hearing Dita say Schnauzer next week. There you go, Walter. I said it. Uh, Skyfe Skyfex says Immaculate, the new movie with uh, Sydney Sweeney. None's in trouble. We're going to talk about him later. was pretty boring, uh, in my opinion, but seeing Sydney Sweeney for the Q&A was cool. She's definitely as good looking in person. John Kibula says, I wish they would give us Blu-rays of T.J. Hooker and Boston legal because i think they are only on, on dvd there, yeah i have the tj uh, hooker box set i know that might be a surprise to some of you but i have it uh, but it's only dvd it's only dvd well the only thing DVD. is look i mean they've got the they've got the transfers i mean if to, to do yeah. something in blu-ray they have to retransfer everything and if they oh, have got yeah. you know it's interesting i don't know if if tj hooker has cut negative yeah you know they Part, uh, from the mid '80s up until yeah. the later '90s, a lot of films or TV shows were posted on videotape, so that's how they exist. Even though they were shot on yeah, film, like yeah. my beloved mid '80s Twilight Zone. You know what? If I won the lottery, or if if I had bought, like I fantasize when I was when when cryptocurrency was new, there was somebody that came to me when crypto when it first came out. Cryptocurrency was thirty cents a bitcoin. And somebody said, hey, you should get involved in this. And I'm like, what the fuck? Bitcoin. What is that? I don't know what that is. Yeah, what the hell? 30 yeah. cents. If I had bought Bitcoin, and we're talking 2009, 2010, I didn't know shit from Shinola. I didn't know anything about it. If I had bought Bitcoin, you know, I would have just kept buying it. At 30 cents, you could have had three Bitcoin for 90 cents. Do you know how much one Bitcoin is worth right now today or this past no. week? $70,000. Yeah. I I would have, it, 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 you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda. You know how it is. Hindsight's... The money, you The money. <laughs> I, would have, I, I would have been buying... If I had known every $100 back then I had, you know, any money I would have had, 100 bucks, 100 bucks, every dollar you get 30 Bitcoin. For $100 you would have had, well, even more because you would have had 10 cents left from every dollar to buy more. I mean, even a hundred dollars, two hundred, three hundred. By the way, I've done the calculations. It's not pretty. We would have all had. We would have all had more fun. I would have been a lot more movies. I could have financed them myself, like Coppola did with Megalopolis. But I don't even know why. You, you know, you know, hindsight is uh, is yeah, everything. You never, you never know. You never know, especially yeah. with with the new new. Uh, you never know. Uh, and speaking, like you said, Rob, with TJ, <clears throat> what Ishe says. They never just do a scan. There's always some processing, color correction, cleanup, etc. Demands dogs are barking because they can sense it's the live live chat recap time. <laughs> Dr. Junior Jackson, I am not ashamed either. I enjoyed the movie. I think he speaks of Madam Web. Vegas Robocop says seeing you tonight. Beyond excited, got an IMAX screening, but it's sadly digital. Well, Vegas Robocop, if it's at least one for free to one, then it's fine, fine by me. If it's just Digital. Walter Whitewalker, funny that Easter is on a different day each year, and yet it's already it's it's always on Rob's birthday. <laughs> and 
<laughs> German, uh, German Nightmare 1976 says, two questions next week. I'll hold you to it. This was the last one, Rob. And of course, he speaks uh, later for the trivia. And perhaps we do two cards this week. All right. Well, first of all, I want to catch up on um, yeah. super some super chats. So Martin Molina sends in a $20 super chat. This is the third super chat Martin Molina has done for this channel. So Martin, thank you. Let's celebrate a uh, third super chat. Thank you. Martin says, I just saw The Promised Land. And watching Ooh, Late Night with the Devil Tonight. Do you guys nice. own the found footage horror film Dash Cam directed by Rob Savage? I have not. I really enjoyed the I film. Heard, I'm I a sucker for found footage films. Is it good? I heard about it, Rob, but I think the reviews were a little bit mixed on Dash Cam. I, 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 yeah, I, I, know the, I know the movie, but uh, I haven't yeah, seen I it. Movie, yeah. You know what? Found footage... The found footage genre, yeah. beginning with you know Blair Witch Project and all that. Now, of course, you could even go back and say one of our favorite cannibal horror films is kind of like that too. But that might have pioneered it, or even earlier. Yeah. Um, I gotta tell you, you know what? I was watching one of my favorite. It's not really found footage, but have yeah. you ever seen the American movie Special Bulletin? No, Rob doesn't bring it up. So Special Bulletin. I don't know why. Uh, it's funny because this pops up in my YouTube feed like once every three or four years. And whenever it does, yeah. I watch it. So Spe Special Bulletin was a TV show. And it was done like the original War of the Worlds broadcast from the 30s. But it was done on TV in the 80s. And it starts out. It, it they It's funny because the video shows. Well, tonight on the NBC movie or whatever. Special, But the premise of Special Bulletin is they make it look like it's a, it's a news report that's breaking in to uh a tv broadcast and it take it it's it's uh uh, uh what is it in st charles or, or it's like in south carolina and like these these gunmen take over a boat and it turns out they might have a nuclear device on board the boat Ooh. and it's done you you know you go through the newsroom it's 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 like a real time broadcast it's really great and nice. I, I always forget that it's on YouTube, but when it pops up, I'm like, oh, special bulletin, because I watched it when I when it was new. Nowadays, it's probably old hat, but you know what? It still works, and it has a nice. great ending. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, found footage can can really and there's really well the new the new uh, second sight disc that's coming out uh, broadcast Bro isn't it, it, it broadcast. It's, it's not called, no. uh, uh, but it is a found, it's like a found footage movie yeah. about these guys yeah. like going to a church or investigating something. No. It was delayed. It's so funny. When Second Sight, my beloved Second <laughs> I love you guys so much. When Second Sight, they're like, uh, we're really sorry. We have to delay our new release by a week. Yeah, a week. Rob. And I'm like, Only I'm, a like week. I'm like, okay, okay. When, when Second Sight says they have to delay something for a week, that's like Orson Welles going, "We will sell no wine before it's time." I mean, if Second Sight wants to delay something for six months, uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. By with the way, me. by the way, yeah. by the way, we have, I for, I forgot to bring this up at the beginning of the show. There was a huge blow to physical media this week, and no one's. Ooh. I don't know if people are talking about it. David the f seven box set David Fincher's seven yeah. with all the swag yeah. was delayed a year. It was pushed from 2024 into 2025, and people are like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I'll tell you why because I read something that was interesting, and I, I haven't seen this reported. Maybe people have reported it. They've made an IMAX version of seven. Okay, it's going to come out in IMAX. They're going nice. to release seven in IMAX theaters, dude. This, 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 this gives me my blood engorges into my privates and forty-five degrees, hard as a rock. I'm like, oh my god, seven in IMAX. Come on, so they're that's doing why they're not and, and first. That's uh, okay. I am. I am assuming this. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I but I would assume that's why they've delayed the physical media release. 
because they're going to do, which I love. I love the fact they're doing this remaster. I mean, Seven had the resilvering process back in the mid '90s. It came out in, in in 1995 when they Criterion did the box set of Seven on Laserdisc. There was a really great uh, special feature about what they did to to give it the look that it had. And Seven is the first movie. I mean, I know David Fincher disowns Alien Three. I know. So Seven yeah. is really David Fincher's first movie. It's the first movie that he accepts. It's a banger. You know, he worked with Andy Kevin Walker on that, who wrote the recent the the killer. Um, uh, so Seven is is and, and by the way, I think Seven is as I've told people when I was reading screenplays for a living. Seven was the first script and the only script I said yes to unequivocally. Said yes to making that movie. It didn't get made till five years later, but um, I love Seven, although I would say that it was different than the script. It was a little bit lower key, but to know that Seven's going to come out in IMAX, I'll wait for their swag-filled box set yeah. in 4K. I can only imagine what that transfer looks like, um, like Amelie, um, you know, and once again, I cannot recommend this highly enough. Even if you're like, it's not in 4K. Somebody on the some Reddit forum will bitch and moan and complain. <laughs> but anyway, so um, that's why it's delayed. That was a that was a big blow because that new box set's cool. That was the box that we talked about. It's coming out at the end of December. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they were saying. So, no, it but, didn't. But delaying like one, one week is, is nothing. Is not. No. So, second sight. So, yeah. Martin... I love the found footage genre if it's good. And it's hard yeah. to make it good, but and there have me, been yeah. great examples of it. Yeah. And for me, Rob, one important aspect of found footage, I want to see actors that I don't know. Right. You know, or I have not if, have if, done not many, many movies. That's why paranormal, paranormal activity worked for me, you know. It actually felt like a home video movie that someone would make, you know. I yeah. didn't know the actors. I didn't know the actor. So it has to be mostly, it should be unknowns considering found footage. Totally agree. I totally agree. Because if you have movie stars in it, yeah. it ruins. Yeah. Then, that's why Blair exactly. Witch Project works so well. Yeah, totally. Um, Justin, uh, hang on. Let me let me just back yeah. up. Uh, Justin Toner says, hi, guys. Two salespeople should be aware of Kino Lorber. Oh, I already did that one. Yeah. Um, uh, on unlimited power it says hey rob i bought a kenner wampa a rancor and a dewback okay first of all i loved my kenner dewback that was the the green lizard and it had a door in the top that you put your stormtrooper to sit in i love my yeah. kenner dewback those are great those are great i love those all three of them are great unlimited power i hope you didn't pay through the nose to get them uh jay says happy birthday rmb and hello deets uh -huh. Hello. Thanks for all the great movie suggestions. Also, currently watching The Beekeeper. Ooh, nice. Good stuff. Crit Nature says, really annoying for me is that 24 is still only on DVD. Just why? Well, as we know, most people are well, buying... Yeah. You, know, you know, the thing about TV shows is is that DVD proved the viability when, when they yeah. started releasing shows. Most people didn't even know that TV shows were done on a season-by-season -season basis. They didn't think of them as seasons. I believe that when they started to be released on DVD on a season-by-season -season basis everyone became aware that, oh, right, TV series have seasons and there are different characters and different actors and all that. So a lot of TV shows remastering on in HD, one, I don't know if maybe 24 was finished, although 24 was at the end of the HD. It started at yeah. the end of the HD era and moved in, to, or sorry, at the end of the standard def era and moved into the HD era. It's a question of cost. I mean, yeah. that's, but, you know, it's kind of a bummer. I think the, the last season came out on Blu-ray. Right. 24. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's like the X-Files. I mean, yeah. the X-Files started out, it was when they remastered the X-Files, they had to go back and redo visual effects. 
and the 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 um the transfer of the X Files they went to widescreen in the fifth season. I actually have a funny I have a funny story. I can't even tell the story in mixed company, but. If you ever meet me in person, ask me why the X Files episode Triangle is so significant to me. Something I remember that has that it was a pivotal moment in my life. It was one of you know those sliding doors moments. Okay. The X Files episode Triangle was a pivotal moment in my life where I might have made an incredibly wrong decision that shaped my life for the rest of it, it's it's one of those moments where and and I know it's not even my favorite it was a gimmicky X-Files episode but there was something that happened the night that episode aired okay that 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 I perhaps should have gone one way but I didn't I went another way thinking something so, was true that might not have been true so it's tied to that episode of the X-Files forever yeah yeah it's a very and it's a very sig but I can't I can't say it in mixed company and I can't certainly say it live on the internet. Uh, it's it's and, it, and and by the way, not for necessarily the reasons you might think, but there's a lot of people's feelings involved, so I'm not going to say it. But but for me and, personally, it was a very critical moment where I think I made a wrong. Actually, I know in the long run, I made a wrong choice. And because of like that, said, uh, by the way, do you know what's in in the episode of Triangle, the X Files episode Triangle? No, Nazis. Just saying, Nazis. Is that is that the third or fourth sucker punch? <laughs> I didn't rival. even know I was going to think about this. Yeah. I didn't even know I was going to think about this. <laughs> I'm just saying. And, and like you said, considering TV, uh, TV shows on DVD, there were some shows from, that started out on Blu-ray. And then they just dropped off the Blu-ray and only released it further on DVD yeah. because I started to collect in Modern Family on Blu-ray. And then they stopped, I think, at well, season and, four and, or five. You know? And it's because of sales figures. Yeah. The the thing is that remastering something, that's why what uh, Warner, you know, to have Warner Archive go back and do a 50s Western like this. And, and, and while, you know, episodic i mean this is basically james bond in the old west in in a way i i totally give it up because there's so many tv shows that have been lost to time this was not something that was syndicated when i was growing up and this was done in blu-ray so this is something that george feltenstein only george feltenstein i mean literally there is one man in hollywood one person in hollywood who would make sure that this is out on on blu-ray one and that's george feltenstein now somebody would probably be like okay well rob what are the sales figures and i would say you know in a world where yellowstone where tyler sheridan shows are are hugely successful there's a reason why george picked this to get released there's a reason why they spent the time to put this out and i would say that it's because and and uh th this has value and this is not something that that people necessarily would know or or delve into, but this is this is something from Western and television history that's been largely forgotten. And if you watch things like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and you see what Rick Dalton was in, I mean Rick Dalton's a fictional character, but it's these kinds of shows, Rawhide, Clint Eastwood. I mean, something like this is really interesting, and that's why it's important. And a lot of TV shows from the mid 80s to even into the 2000s will never make their way to blu-ray yeah. which is sad it's a bummer but they all should be because if there aren't high definition versions they're kind of useless in the streaming world but you have to figure out how are you going to pay for them how are you going to pay for their restorations if you can't make money back in the long run which i get so crit nature thank you for that comment look what we've done you've sent me off on a to raid now you've Engine. made me realize that uh part of my past might have led me to a much different path major chai chai Ooh. um oh, all of up that builder okay builder okay major chai chai now hang on a second she's got a good point here yeah 
And I, I, okay, this is a good, this is a good, this is why I love our audience. They're very astute. They pay attention. Yeah. Major Chai Chai says, how can you mention outbreak and contagion and not mention the granddaddy outbreak movie of them all, the Andromeda strain, Ooh. which by the way, released the tribute feature on Blu-ray, you know, no, but here's the thing. The reason, the reason is I would say that ultimately the Andromeda strain comes from a different place. The Andromeda strain is about an extraterrestrial contagion. And while I agree, when I was a kid, the Andromeda strain instilled in me a love of movies about diseases. Books, give me a great outbreak, give me a great you know pandemic vectoring. The Andromeda strain made me love disease movies and the andromeda strain is great but i still think of the andromeda strain in my mind as an alien invasion movie it, except it's a microbial alien that's invaded earth as opposed to say the movie is a, it's a little bit more contained still yeah and and yeah against, uh, against but, but but and, but major chai chai is right the andromeda strain yeah. is the grand it really is the granddaddy of of contagion movies but to me, it's more of an extraterrestrial. I think of the Andromeda Strain as a science fiction movie, where I think of both Contagion and Outbreak as a nature strikes back movie. The same way that the beginning of the end about giant grasshoppers or, or a them about giant ants or Day of the Animals, William Girdler's Day of the Animals. Contagion and Outbreak are still terrestrial films, whereas Andromeda Strain is... Now, that I know I'm splitting hairs. Major Chai Chai is right. I leave it up to you. Do you feel that the Andromeda Strain works with Contagion or Outbreak? Or is it, as I can uh, maintain, a science fiction movie about an extraterrestrial entity, in this case, a microbial entity, invading Earth? The dangers of being invaded, because invasion of the body snatchers is kind of the same thing. A, a seed pod comes down and takes root. The seed is planted. Terror grows. I don't know. It's up to you. It's up to you. That's why we love our viewers. Paul so Allen Brunotto. Those, those, those two, those two, would make the other double feature: Roman Strain and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. That you know what the second. Second there you go. That is there. The, I totally agree with that. And I, Arrow has released both of those movies. Yeah, they should do two packs. Two packs. Two packs. Um, Paul Allen Brunotto, who made sure oh. that Cynthia Rothrock came on this channel, yeah. um, uh, says, "Don't forget Chris Stuckman's found footage movie, Shelby Oaks, releasing later this year. Hope it's really good. Chris has a lot riding on this." I did not know Shelby but, Oaks but, was a found footage movie. No, I'm not aware, Rob, that it that it is a found footage movie. Uh, that's that's I wouldn't amazing. Think so. That's the first thing that I heard, Paul. That it, it would be a, a found footage movie. I wasn't I, I thought it was just a regular, regular movie. Not not a found footage. But let's let's see. Let's see what he's came up with. Because, like we, like I said, Rob, found footage works for me best with unknowns. But he has well-known actors in his movie, so let's see, let's see. Uh, Stubble McShave, Stubble sends in a tip, and this is why I was protecting yeah. my books. Stubble McShave okay. says, "Rob, there's a question I've been meaning to ask you for several months. I'm desperate to know the answer to this question. What are the red books?" Behind your right side, our left side. You mean those books right there? Well, I have to take off. Uh, so, no. So, my grandfather was an interesting cat. And um, my grandfather, he had behind his, uh, he had a den in his house. And in his den, he had books. And for whatever reason, he did not want me to touch them. He didn't want me to touch them. And um, they had all of the works of Mark Twain, Shakespeare, O. Henry, William Makepeace Thackeray. Um, all of those books were his. And a, an unbelievable copy of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. So when he passed away, 
and I was with him. I was holding his hand when he actually flatlined. Um, you can't see, but all of these books here are all of my grandfather's books. So these red books right here. Actually, you, you can't see. Let me go full frame Yeah, if you can see them. So these books right here are all the works of Mark Twain. Now, um, it's it's so th this is it's two different publications so you get to right there and these are different versions but this is all the works of mark twain everything he ever wrote uh you can't really see it but um william mace make peace thackerley is here who wrote of course the book barry linden was based on and then there's a there's a uh, Shakespeare's plays book, and then O. Henry uh, is is uh, down there. So those are all of the ones that you can see with the shuttlecrafts from various Star Trek shows. These are all Mark Twain, all of them, and they were all from uh, when my grandfather was at Princeton in nine. My grandfather was was um, born in 1910. And uh, those are when he was in Princeton in the late 20s, early 30s. So nice. there you go. Hey, and goes, um, I haven't read all of them. I, with with the, the Twain books, I've read about half. Um, but the other ones I've read almost all the way through. So that's what those are. Stubble, great question. And then, uh, of course, we've got uh, Claudius says, Ola Dieter, Robert, go Saarbrücken, go yes. Arsenal. He was and uh, Claudius also says, Dieter, Rob, I just received two copies of the Abyss Ultimate Collector's Edition from Barnes & Noble, one for Dean Mikitich nice. and one for myself. Great. Uh, which is good. Uh, Paul, by the way, Paul became a member. Paul Allen uh, Bernardo became a member of the channel. Thank you. That nice. Our friend Des Doyle, all the way from Ireland, Ooh. said, yes. ho, ho. "Wait a minute! I just received the fantastic six scale Strontium Dog from 2000 AD comic figure by Flat Fish Collectibles. Holy shit! They made a Strontium Dog, a six scale Strontium Dog." I must have one. I must look into this. <laughs> Do you own any 2000 AD figures? Well, I mean, I own, I I own the movie versions of Judge Red, and for me, you know what I here's what I want, and I don't know if this is true because no one knows this. Alan Moore wrote a 2000 AD series about two characters named Dr. and Quinch, and they're I love them, and I want. I want six scale figures of DR and Quinch. And um, if you don't know, one of my favorite comic book covers ever is when DR and Quinch uh, are, are going to be recruited to the military. And they're like these murderous characters. And they, 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 the, the cover has, a, has them standing at the doorway of a military, uh, mil uh, military depot of weapons. Just all the weapons you've ever imagined in the world, and 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 Dr. is saying to Quinch, they're they're deciding whether or not they're going to join the military, and one of them says, "Wow, a vast array of totally like lethal weapons," and the other one says, "We'll join, man." I don't know why I love it, but uh, I do love it. So I'm a huge. I didn't know they made a strong team dog six scale yeah. figure. I must have it. Um. Mark Spector's avatar said, did Jillian Anderson invite you to her trailer? Uh, sadly, I've never met Jillian Anderson. No, no. At the, the, the this pivotal moment in my life, I just happened to be watching Triangle, and I feel guilty about watching it because I kept, imagine I'm in a situation where I shouldn't have been paying at all any attention to what was on TV, and I kept kind of going like this, although I'll leave that up to you because it has a lot more of a story than just that. But uh, Irene Jobson might imagine what it's like. Anyway, I'll just leave it there. But it, it, it's a long story. Uh, Admiral Terrier 
Says hey. Easter Easter sale on Arrow. Bought all the Jallo Essentials box set and Psycho. The story continues in 4K. Uh, Moses digged physical media despite owning tablets. I guess you're talking about <laughs> Moses bringing down the tablets yeah. from the mountain. Was that Mount Ararat? Yeah. Was that what that was? Uh, so there we go, buddy. And um, nice. we're caught up. So we should then go roll into on you six. You want the on news? I got yeah. the news. Okay, look at this in a VHS box. Look what's coming out in 4K. But bam, karate the Karate kid. kid. Yeah. The Karate Kid coming out in a 4K set in a VHS box. Very exciting. A little bit of new special features. Actually, Rob, yes, I am, even if I bought that movie way too often. <laughs> well, there you go. And then, of yeah, course, uh, Luke Basson, before he made The Professional, he made La Femme yeah. Nikita, which has been adapted into two TV shows coming out in 4K, again, from the same studio that brought you Amelie. I'm sure this is going to be great. Nice. Looking forward to it. And then, of course, we've talked about this before, but it's finally coming out. Yeah. MVD's Hardware Wars. Oh yeah, got a little bit. Postponed. I mean, I had, I had the look. I what I love is in the middle. That was what the original Warner yeah. VHS tape that had uh, Closet Encounters of the Nerd Kind, Pork Lips Now, and Bambi versus Godzilla on it. So there you go from MDV coming out on yeah. Blu-ray. Very exciting. And then we have. Uh, Warner Archive did not announce this last week. They announced it this week. The Devil's Doorway, starring Robert Taylor. Uh, it's an MGM. It's a great drama of a, a flaming frontier. So there you go. Look at that. Come on. Look at that. Look at that cover. So George Feltenstein and the boys. Now we get to Arrow. Paul Schrader's 1980. Call me. Heart of glass. Whatever. Call me. American Gigolo coming out in 4K. I love their artwork because they always give you the option to use in the the inner disc. You can put the the actual yeah. poster. I love American Gigolo. Um, Lauren Hutton, and of course Bill Duke, and of course one of the most handsome man ever, Richard Gear, Primal Gear, coming out in 4K. <laughs> then we've got, of course, from Arrow, Mute Witness, Ooh, another. Nice great film and then what was coming out from one of um vinegar syndrome's partner labels we've talked about night siren before coming out from awesome. arrow awesome. Uh, but, uh, uh blu-ray coming out in blu-ray yep yep that's yep. great yeah yeah great and then mad men coming out in 4k mad man is coming out in 4k Ooh. classic 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 and uh i'm going to drop it today the second the second whining about movies, one of my favorites, a movie Americans do not understand, but Brits do, with nail and eye in 4K. We've got a holiday. We've gone on holiday by mistake. We want your <laughs> finest ales. Come on, I love this movie. Americans don't get it. It's too bad, but maybe they'll rediscover it and understand what they're missing. Uh, that's coming out from Arrow. Good job, Arrow. If I, if, if I remember, Elizabeth wasn't a fan either. If I remember correctly, Rob. Yeah, if what I does she know? <laughs> She's just a painter. Uh, try and sh this is our second whining about movies. I'm going to drop yeah. it today. Drop it today just so you can experience it. And then, of course, Anita Ekberg coming from Shameless, Killer Nun. You know... We've got the first Omen coming out with nuns in trouble. We just had Immaculate with Sydney Sweeney. Can you believe Sydney Sweeney ever became a nun? I can't. No verisimilitude there. But anyway, we've got Anita Ekberg in 1979's Killer Nun from Shameless. Why wouldn't you want this? I don't know. I haven't seen this movie, but nunsploitation is a new genre. The kids today are going to find a lot of fun. Then we've got, coming from BFI, two films from Ozu. I was born but, and there was a father, Ozu, one of the Japanese masters of contemplative, emotional, sad, maybe, Japanese cinema. Ozu, the master. Two films coming out from BFI. Anything from BFI is worth buying. So we got that coming out, which is exciting. 
Then we've got coming from Severin, Game of Clones, Bruce Sploitation Collection. <laughs> after <laughs> Bruce Game Lee died, <laughs> Game of Clones. Get it? The you know capitalizing great, after Bruce great. Lee died. The get first yeah. of all, God bless Severin. And by the way, this is only Volume One. God bless Severin. Ooh. Severin. Severin. You know they're one of those guys. They're they're one of those uh, home video labels that you've got to love. Black Emmanuel, you go Severin. When Severin puts out a box set, you must listen. It's kind of like the um, the old trailer for the Last Wave. If you've been warned, you must listen. Now I don't know what this. I haven't seen this movie, but this is the Gold Fingers or the Gold Finger. This is coming out. Look at that Tony Lung there in a chair. Uh, Hong Kong film from 2023. I don't care if Tony Lung's in it wearing a linen suit. I will watch it. And um, in a chair. In a chair. I mean, chair. It, Tony Lung. Tony Lung is the master. And Studio Canal, once again, following up their Ealing Studios releases of The Lady Killers and Kind Hearts and Coronets, which I understand. I went back and looked. The big box set was only Blu-ray. Yeah getting the 4K and putting it in that Blu-ray. But look what they're releasing. Maybe the most well-known of the Ealing Studio. Well, I guess Kind Hearts and Coronets. The Lavender Hill Mob coming out in 4K. Another banger. Another banger from Alec Guinness and Ealing Studios. I mean, you got to love Ealing Studios. They put out some of the great British films of that era. Now here's here's something I I gotta tell you, dudes. I gotta give a little bit, yeah. a little bit emotion. Uh, well, just a little, a little, yeah, okay. a little emotional. So okay, Kino Lorber is putting this out. There are multiple cuts of this movie. Uh, I yeah. think this is a terrific film, but unfortunately, director Richard Stanley, who I uh, who I've actually met, who he was directing the remake of Island of Doctor Moreau. He got fired, replaced by John Frankenheimer, and he snuck back onto the set and played a monster in the background, and no one knew. Richard Franklin made hardware. Yeah. Uh, here's, and I Dust think, Devil. well, Dust Devil is coming out from Kino Lorber in 4K, and uh, we are friends on Facebook, and unfortunately he was not involved with this release at all. I do not fault okay. Kino Lorber for that. So he doesn't know exactly what version of the film is coming out, but it's 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 not cool. They should have in, involved him in this, if I can say that. And if you can get a filmmaker or a cinematographer, people that were alive in the film and you're doing a remaster or a new version that's only available in 4K or whatever, please, please, you're laundering money. It's fine. The cartels can actually pay a little extra cash. They haven't seen Dust Devil. They'll probably love Dust Devil. How many horror films are made in Africa? Come on. So there are three versions, Rob, of, of Dust Devil. Something like that, yeah. Okay. But he doesn't know which versions and what elements and doesn't yeah. know where they came from. Look, Kino Lorber has been doing a bang-up job, got to say, to live and die in L.A. Uh, can I just say, uh, uh, I got this is total aside, it's a little to live and die in LA, L.A. aside. So Jane leaves Daphne from Frasier. So Elizabeth started watching a, another TV show on Netflix, The Resident, medical show. Yeah. You know, yeah. Bruce Greenwood's in it. Nice. Uh, in the second season, Jane Leaves shows up. Jane Leaves played the dancing lesbian girlfriend in To Live and Die in L.A. People don't know this. But when I saw Jane Leaves, I took to I turned to Elizabeth just last night. I go, oh, my God, that's Jane Leaves. And Elizabeth was like, so what? And she's like, she's into live and die in LA. <laughs> and Elizabeth she just, she just shook her head at me and she goes, What is it with you? What is it with you in and that, that movie? And that movie. And that movie. Anyway, so Jane Leaves, if you're Jane Leaves fans, yeah. don't forget. She doesn't have a line of dialogue, but she certainly spreads her legs and smiles well. Let me just say, she has a threesome with Willem Dafoe and anyway. Just okay. Uh, back to what are we talking about? Oh yes, the top the twenty, the, the top twenty <laughs> sellers for the week. <laughs> now these are the the yeah. movies that, oh, um, yeah. The, uh, number one, Aquaman: Lost Kingdom. Yeah. By the way, these are all the discs, Blu-rays, DVDs, and yeah. 4K. Oh, Aquaman: The Lost Kingdom, Wish, 
Wonka, Migration, Oppenheimer, Aliens, The Hunger Game, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, Anyone But You, Little Sydney Sweeney, True Lies, and The Abyss. Abyss. Here we go for Blu-ray. We have Aquaman, The Lost Kingdom, Aliens, True Lies, Wish, The Abyss, Wonka, Oppenheimer, Migration, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and Dune, Part 1. And with 4K, ending the week of March 23rd, Aliens, number one, True Lies, The Abyss, Aquaman, The Lost Kingdom, Oppenheimer, The Ring Collection, which we showed last week. Shout out to producer Roy Lee for having the foresight to bring Asian horror, -horror, J-horror to America and remaking The Ring because it's a banger and that set's great. Dune Part 1, Wonka, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and Wish. That's all the news that's fit to print. If you don't like my choices of what I pick, you can always go to Blu-ray.com. Look at their news, which I'm poaching every week, just so you know. They have a lot of other titles that I choose not to focus on for whatever reason, because I'm lazy and I have to go out and make more, you know, download them and put them up. But Blu-ray.com, go to MediaPlayNews.com and Blu-ray.com. And you know what? I want to give a shout-out because I keep forgetting, but he keeps sending me yeah. his newsletter. I want to give a shout-out to Douglas Pratt. Uh, Douglas Pratt has the Laserdisc and DVD newsletter. Douglas Pratt has been putting out this newsletter since the 80s. Ooh. My friend Craig Highland at Video File in Seattle up on Broadway on Capitol Hill that I started going to in 1984... That my mother actually bought me Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock on Laserdisc from Craig. Craig's one of my oldest friends in the world. Craig was the first person who turned me on to Douglas Pratt's newsletter. They used to sell it at Tower Records, and I bought it there. Douglas Pratt is still putting out the Laserdisc DVD newsletter. Now it's, of course, all full of 4K and, and yeah. Blu-ray discs. Everybody should go look up Douglas Pratt and look up the la- DVD Laserdisc, or the pardon me, the Laserdisc DVD newsletter. He keeps that title as a legacy title. Go to his website, subscribe to it, give him a few bucks. He's been doing this for forty years. He deserves your support. Great. So Douglas Pratt, thank you, sir. I always forget to mention you, but I'm remembering it now. Uh, Rob, since I've seen Tune Part One appearing again in the top ten charts. Do we know anything? I've talked a little bit about with Thomas Logan about it. Getting perhaps a re-release with the IMAX format? Is there I, you know, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. I, I would love that. Yeah. I really would. Do we, we do we know, considering part two, which version will they put on disc? I haven't heard. You know, I know I, it's I coming out. Fine, this... Rob, if, if it would be it would if it would be the one point nine to one version. You know, it would I, be a nice I would too. middle of the road. Uh, yeah. Middle of the road. Uh, you know, you know, multiple versions. I, I, you know, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Fingers crossed. Fingers, yes. fingers crossed. So, Rob, are we caught up with the Super Chats? I don't know. So I have no idea. Um, yeah. We shall see. Oh. Um, uh, <laughs> wow. Dan Candy. Says he got a sixth scale J.W. Pepper today. J.W. Pepper was a southern fried sheriff that was in both Live and Let Die and Man with the Golden Gun. I didn't even know they made that. Now I've got to look it up. Now I'm obsessed. I must have it. Oh my God, Dan no, Candy. Two. two figures that you want. <laughs> two figures. And then and, and Channel Surf follows it up by saying, I just got the executive replicas one six scale Republic serial robot. It is fantastic. My wife asked me to get her the one twelfth scale version of it. Okay, first of all, usually your wife wants the bigger version of the thing. I'm just saying. So you, the fact that you have the six scale version and your wife wants a one twelfth scale version means your marriage is clearly stable. So I would say, well done, well done, Channel Surf. Um, <laughs> Because, you know, everybody usually wants a bigger version of something. I know I do. Um, 
Dirty Mother Towson. Dirty Mother Towson says, Rob, I can't thank you enough for influencing me to broaden my movie watching horizon. I recently acquired the Kino Lorber 4K of Invasion of the Body Snatchers from your recommendation. Nice. Films like this make me happy to be back into collecting physical media. Well, Dirty Mother Towson, nice golf clap for you, sir. By the way, first of all, one, how great does the movie look? And it's lost none of its power, aside from the fact that there's no cell phones or anything. And it is, you know, some of the, it, it's a little mannered. But that movie is still a banger. And if you look into the great, the, the triptych, I would say Invasion of the Body Snatchers, John Carpenter's The Thing, and of course Cronenberg's The Fly, that spans from 78 to 86, are three of my favorite 50s remakes. And I would dare say for those people, although I don't love it as much only because the intellectual concerns of the movie aren't as high, Chuck Russell's uh, 1988 remake of The Blob fits right in. You know, so I'm glad um, you are enjoying collecting physical media again. Thank you so much, Dirty Mother Towson, for doing that. Um, so back on the wagon, back on the wagon, and I'll tell you, you know what's cool? What I really like yeah. about the 4K format is where physical media is going to die. There's going to be no more physical media after 4K. There just isn't. No one's going to make machines. No one's going. to... So if you want to just just collect 4K because you have to get you have to get a 4K TV, you have to get an amplifier that can can you have to have a good home theater system to enjoy it all. You have to get a 4K player. So if you're yeah. into 4K, you're it, it's almost like a shrine. It's almost like a you oh. love cinema and collect your favorite movies on 4K, and that'll be just a thing. You can you, and it's a thing that'll that'll be the end of physical media, but. You can have your little shrine in your house, get your great OLED, get a great projector, whether it's laser projector or whatever, and just collect. You know, I have a, a friend of mine who's a, a DP, a, a director of photography, and he just has his 100 favorite movies. That's all yeah. he has. His and 100 he, favorite movies. And he can, can lead backdrop and be, I don't care what the streaming service are doing with those titles. No. You know? And he's got the best versions. I mean, you get the best releases and you collect your favorite things you have them in 4k and that could be the end of it and um yeah. so you have your curated curated museum experience and, and you make a great home theater system it can work watching streaming i mean streaming is getting better all the time the dolby vision uh for uh, netflix does a great job disney plus does a great job with um um uh, Dolby Vision and Atmos and their shows. You have to pay a little bit more. You have to look into the fact yeah. that... But still, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Totally. So we are caught up on news and everything. Well, okay, Rob. So, trivia time. Oh, shit, man. TOS? <laughs> uh, TNG? So, no, dude. Or, I'm, or I'm, or I'm always going to go TOS. Okay, okay. But these questions, okay. I want to just... Yeah, I know. I know. I'm just saying, okay, okay. Since we didn't play one last, we'll play two. TOS. And I show you the back of the card because they are always uh, giving away uh, what the five questions will be about, Rob. And since you know the series too well, perhaps this will give you already a hint. Yes, that is Spock's brain. What about what the question will be. So we go, Rob. Oh, boy. How did the controller organize society on Kara's planet? How did the controller uh, organize society? It separated on the Kara's society planet? between men and women. Yes, by separating the sexes. Right. Who stole Spock's brain for use by the controller? Who stole Spock's brain oh my God. for use by the controller? Don't forget, Rob, you can go multiple choice if you're not sure. I don't Who remember. Who stole um, brain? Uh, what's her name? For use I, God, I don't know. Um, Hang on. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you time, Rob. Who stole Spock? There's Who two chicks. Yeah. Kara? Correct! Correct! Yes. 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 Yes.
backdrop. You're right. You're right. It was Kara. Really? The other. Yeah, Luma. yeah it was. Luma. Luma, Luma was, was the second one, which is an, an alternative here on the multiple choice. And Morg they put on here. You were right, right? Kara. Uh, third question. On what planet was the controller based? On what planet was uh, the controller uh, based? Uh, it's the Sigma Draconis system. Exactly, Rob. Is that exactly. the planet, Sigma Draconis? Uh, Sigma Dr Draconis 6, they say here. Sigma Draconis okay, well, 6. I didn't know it was 6. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, and totally, if you said Sigma Draconis, that's that's okay. fine by me, Rob. Uh, fourth one. How long could the controller operate when implanted with a new brain? How long could the controller operate when implanted with a new brain? Oh, my God. How long? 24 hours multiple choice multiple choice okay okay, okay Rob. multiple choice thousand years ten thousand years one hundred oh oh, years. oh 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 i thought okay i thought you meant how long okay uh how long could the controller operate ten thousand years ten thousand okay that's right Rob. right here on multiple sorry choice. it had to be multiple choice no I problem. thought it was how long would Spock... Don't let, don't let us hear that, that annoying sound, Rob. That's the, that's the main main focus here. Okay. The controller was featured in the episode Spock's brain. Who said his brain is gone in that episode? Ah, who said his brain is gone in that episode? Dr. McCoy. The con correct, Rob. Correct. First one, none, none answered wrong. So the second... Trivia card drop features Wait, this what? character. That's Landru from bag. Return of the Archons, first season. Yeah, we, we didn't play a last one, Rob. So we played oh, two. So have to, oh, three. my God. Uh -huh. Really? Really? During what, I mean, really? Yeah. During what annual festival the did Landru allow the population to run amok? During what annual festival the did Red Landru hour? allow the population? Correct, Rob. That hour is correct. Better who be. had a rob? Who had a rob? Police enforcing the will of Landru. Who had a rob? Police enforcing the will of Landru. The who? Wait, the robe? The robe? The robe yeah, the, the robe. Police enforcing the will of Landru. Who were? The how would they? Law how would they call? Well, they were. They were called the law right. lawgivers. Yeah, Rob, you're right. The lawgivers. That's correct. To which wanton world did Landru bring peace and truth? To which wanton world did Landru bring peace and truth? Oh, man. To which wanton um, world did Landru bring peace and truth? Three okay, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Yeah. Darren Doctorman's company is called Beta yeah. 5. Okay. But that's not Landrew's planet. It's no. Beta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not Beta 5. Um. Peter is correct. Rob. Hang on, hang on. Only uh, number. And only three? Number. Three? Exactly, Rob. You're exactly right. Planet Peter <laughs> 3. Yeah. You're right, Rob. You're right. How long did Lontru's computer rule his planet and guide his people after his death? How long did Lontru's computer rule his planet? Oh, my God. I got to go multiple. I got to go. I don't know. Multiple choice. 1,000 years, 6,000 years, 10,000 years. How long did Lentus come It's not 10,000. Wait, it's it's not 10,000. What? what uh, uh, Thousands, thousands, thousand are the other two. If you said it's not 10,000. Thousand, 6,000, or 10,000? When you said 10,000, it is not. It, 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 one more time. How long did Lentus' computer rule his planet and guide his people after his death? 1,000 years, 6,000 years, or 10,000 years? 6,000. Yeah, you're right, Rob. You're right. And last one, Rob. 
Before the Enterprise land through forced what other starship crew to, to the surface of the, Ar the planet. The Archons. Yeah, Rob. You're right, Rob. Because the right. episode, well, the episode's uh, called Return of the Archons. Yeah. yeah. You're right, Rob. Rob, what can I say? Ten questions, and I didn't have, didn't need to use the buzzer once. See, I, I, but I, you that's showed it. me the picture. See, the thing is, you, yeah, you shouldn't but show it, me that. That's the, okay, Rob. But, yeah, but. But, but I know that's, are, that's Landru. That's Landru. So. Yeah, but, but that doesn't tell you anything about the question what they will ask about land rule. by the um, way i'll tell you would, this i'll tell you this and when you when i read the question rob you know you hear the name land true so i'm right, willing to bet you only. i'm willing to bet yeah. you that every single person who's currently writing star trek strange new worlds and star trek discovery could not answer any one of those questions you're probably right i'm just saying <laughs> just, just want to point that out <laughs> great rob I didn't have to use our Go A button. <laughs> Great. So the battery life will extend. Will extend. Great. And I have, and I keep score up. I keep I keep score. I know. Going to multiple choice though, I gotta tell you, I I can't. These are more straightforward though. They weren't playing with the questions okay. though. Okay. They weren't playing okay. with the questions as much. Yeah. Nice. So uh Rob, from my end, are there some super chats left? Or no, I think we're good. We Hang on. Okay. I don't know. Uh, oh wait, no. Um. Okay. Here, th okay, this is interesting. No, we got a couple good ones. Crit Nature. Crit Nature. Okay. Says 4K is great. However, sometimes HDR is just too bright for me. Yeah. And even though yeah. I calibrated my TV, for example, the Enterprise in Wrath of Khan, that scene almost yeah. blinded me, laugh out loud. Ooh. The room needs to dim, but not too dark for HDR, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, That's what's probably the, the director of photography of Ryan Johnson means. <laughs> nope. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> again, HDR, high dynamic range and yeah. all that is an affectation of video and like i have to say i spent a day calibrating my oled uh 4k set and um i've never not been happy with the look of it but i use you know i use a professional calibration tool and for the most part i think it looks pretty good but some people yeah. don't always have that it depends what it depends but what kind be, of it would be nice to know what what you think of Really yeah, which if I ever get it, you know, I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 the the funny thing is is you can't calibrate your TV as far as I understand it. You can't calibrate your display using yeah. an HDR or Dolby Vision source. No. No. You have to Dolby use Vision. you just have to use the I just used standard color bars yeah. and all that. So. I don't know. I don't know so how to calibrate. So that at least should be your starting point, Rob. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, if, perhaps, if there's something perhaps, off, if there's something off, yeah. there's probably something wrong with the calibration, I would say. If there's something that suddenly gets too bright, it shouldn't do that. Or that could well, be a mistake if, in the disc. Because remember, well, H, H, television. HDR, high dynamic range. So there's HDR, HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, and Dolby Vision. And all of the HDR information is metadata that's being fed to your display from the actual disc itself. So, like, for instance, HDR10 is a fixed look. So it, it sends the metadata and it's got yeah. one look, whereas HDR10 plus will change from, you know, overall, if something is, if, if it's, it's a daylight scene or a nighttime scene, it'll change. Dolby Vision is the most sophisticated in that it's every single scene. And the thing is, sometimes it'll be off by like a frame and you'll see it yeah. pop of some kind. But it's all a bunch of BS because it, you're not looking at a photochemical. You're looking at a video version of something, yeah. which I can well, understand. Well, perhaps if, uh, if your television allows, uh, have two settings, you know, that, you're, that you use, you know, considering what, what kind, of, kind of disc you are, you're watching. Yes, yeah. two different settings. Uh, our friend 200 Watt Studio always, always uh, tweaking, always saying something funny. 
says, Rob, do you agree the season of Discovery looks fantastic? No, I've seen this season of Discovery. <laughs> um, Does it just mean the picture quality, Rob? No, if it looks fantastic. No, I don't even think it looks fantastic. <laughs> there, see, Ooh. here's, okay, here's the thing. There's basically a big motorcycle chase in the first episode of Discovery. Yeah. Okay, they can't really do a motorcycle chase. So it's all CG backgrounds. It's a swoop Ooh. bike chase from Attack of the Clones or whatever. And then, of course, Deets, I kid you not, two starships, including the Discovery. This is true, by the way. Oh, they do crash landings again. They right? crash into the ground. As a matter of fact, you know what? If you look at my Instagram yeah. feed, hang on, maybe I can... I, I, I did steal a frame grab. I yeah. might have the episodes. I don't know where they came from. I might. As a matter of fact, I could probably. Well, I don't want to get in trouble. Demonetized. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they, they two starships crash into the ground to stop an avalanche. I'm I'm sorry. Oh, so they're not they're, they're not crashing because of uh, uh, failure, mechanical no. failure. They or intentionally other? crash into the ground. Oh. Okay. Okay. And showrunner Michelle Paradise wrote this episode. Um, to me, uh, uh, and it's all a sequel to the sixth season Next Generation episode, The Chase, which could have been interesting if, you know, Michelle Paradise had ever read a science fiction novel in her life, but she hasn't. So, uh, yeah, it's not. Look, S Star Trek Discovery Season 5 is once again... They're trying to do a show that isn't Star Trek. How can we make it Guardians of the Galaxy? How can we make it this? How can we make it that? Let's search for MacGuffin. Let's do Raiders of the Lost Ark. Let's have, I mean, it's like now these people are going to make, uh, well, they're already making Section 31, and they're going to do a Starfleet Academy show. A Starfleet Academy show about people going to school in the 32nd century. I hate them all. <laughs> because... <laughs> I mean, all they do is make a bunch of bullshit. They're not making science fiction. They're not even making allegorical shows. You know what they're all doing? They're all doing... You know why Star Trek Starfleet Academy is going to be the ultimate show? Because all of these showrunners and people writing TV, they all grew up with Joss Whedon. They all grew up with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. They can't wait to do a show about going to school. It'll all be interpersonal relationships. They're not science fiction writers. So, And the thing about Star Trek is we want to watch stories about people that already graduated from Starfleet Academy. Going to Starfleet yeah. Academy, that's why they did like one episode. They did in TNG, they did uh, Coming of Age, where Wesley's first applying. Then they do the first duty, which is, by the way, if you were to bring up one of the great TV shows of all time about going to school, The Paper Chase, based on a feature film, they don't know what that is. They haven't watched it. They're, 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 everyone's touchstone is Joss Whedon's Buffy the Vampire Slayer and and why why because hey you've got same sex relationships you got vampires and horror and you've got is it Angel is it Spike is, I mean I can't even tell you how dis and then then they're gonna have to shoehorn space action into it too which is totally stupid I mean it, I, I just it's so dumb. It's so dumb. The most uncreative thing ever. They've been trying to do a Starfleet Academy series forever. Nobody wants to watch that because people want to watch a show in Star Trek about people that have already graduated. Just saying. Um, Twinderwatt Studio says, how do you think Discovery will end? Not with a bang, my friend, but with a whimper. <laughs> As the Skeksis said, I hate your whimper. Mm -hmm. So bad. Major Chai Chai gifted a Burnett Work membership. Thank you, Major Chai Chai. Nice, thank you. Um, uh, uh, Terrier says, great rant yeah. moment to show Rob O'Brien. Yeah. Terrier made an image of me as Rob O'Brien from Star Trek. I didn't pull that image off yeah. Twitter, so I don't I don't have it ready <laughs> to go on the show, Terrier, but I appreciate it. I, you know, I, I'm tired of ranting about Star Trek. I'm tired of... Of of really? watching the vandal, really? I, I know, I know. I'm tired of watching the vandal vandalization of culture. You didn't seem tired at all. Two, you didn't seem tired at all two minutes ago. <laughs> I don't know why I do this to myself over and over and over again. But but the fifth one is the last season. As far Thank as God. Thank God. A show a show where where every episode shows the people making it. 
have like never watched Star Trek. The internal makeup of the Discovery. It's so frustrating to watch. And you know what? Like your trivia questions, I'm watching a show where millions of dollars are being spent by people who haven't even watched Star Trek. Michelle Paradise has not watched Star Trek. She probably watched a few episodes that she had to read for BuzzFeed. But people are like, there's hundreds of episodes. Why should I watch them? I don't know. Maybe you should because you're making a Star Trek show. Your Star Trek show is dumb. I hate Discovery. Hate it. Hate it. It was all your fiery passion. Yeah, because it's a stupid show. It's a brain dead program that it, it it's a show that thinks it's giving you what Star Trek is. People give these like highfalutin speeches and people understand, oh, that's a Star Trek speech. It's a show about cliches written by people that only understand cliches. Oh wait, what what are we talking about? I forget. <laughs> Star Trek? See what you did there, two hundred watt studio. <laughs> God damn it. Calm down, calm down. Uh, can we end this show? Because I'm in pain. Yeah, horrible, I'm pain. horrible, <laughs> awful pain. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we're caught up. Uh, let, caught me up. Just, let me okay. just make sure. Let me just yeah. check one other place for How me. About a super check? Yeah. Uh, I think we're caught up on super chats. I just want to make sure we don't miss anyone. Yeah. Um, if there's any last minute tips anyone threw in here, we shall see. Uh, Len. Uh, uh, McIsaac is a, a PGS okay. hero. Major Chai Chai also became. Oh, she she tipped. A, she sent out a membership. Thank you very mm -hmm. much for that. Yep. Um, Sub McShave asks: Have you heard any news about how long the Baltimore port will be out of service, and how significant is the port? Uh, the Baltimore port in the United States received more cars, more automobiles to sell than any other port in the United States, and. Um, I, it's, I've heard that it might take five years to rebuild the bridge, but I don't know how long the port is going to be out uh, of order. Um, and, you know, they'll probably find out it was a cyber attack because it was it was a vessel returning to, was it Taiwanese or Singapore? I don't know. Probably. I mean, I'm not saying it was a cyber attack, but who knows? Uh, I think, I don't know if it was a comment on your show. Uh, or it wasn't in the, in the live chat. Can from... I? There's a leak. Can I let you talk for yeah. just a minute? I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as I heard on observations in the live chat, somebody said that that vessel, that a ship had already uh, had some troubles here and there. So at one point, they probably culminated in that. So considering considering our trivia. I will do after 10, 10 cards a little bit how Rob is standing, considering how many points he could have gotten and how many he got already. So on my end, let's hear it at least one time, because Rob didn't get any question wrong. My recommendation is fucking Emil, which is a, is a city. <laughs> Not the girl's name. And Rob, and give it a chance, Phil. Give it a chance. And of course, theatrical version is the one to go to. Not the special edition. Theatrical version is the better one. Uh, what else? I think Bruce Lee uh, uh Chloroy in the in the live chat asked me what is my favorite console, PS5 or Xbox. I actually quite enjoy them both uh, for different reasons. Because of PS5, you just got to have because of the console exclusive. So normally, the console exclusives for the PS5, I get for the PS5. And when it's for both available, I normally take the one for the Xbox. So I try, at least I try to keep it uh, balanced. Uh, not a cyber attack, says Michael D. Just horrible maintenance and cutting corners. Yeah, that was probably would be my take uh, too. Let me just see if I can. Damn it. Camp Camp's crash course is member for 35 
month. So Rob, I would think we are finishing that you can take Can I just say of. that, you know, yeah. I've, I, yeah. I used a, a silicon spray yeah. thing okay. to replace, uh, to, to fix. I knew when we moved in here that this garage was compromised. Yeah. And um, this is the third spring I've spent in it, but all of my fixes, ugh, they all blew out this, they all blew out today over the last, since last night. So apparently you, there are no quick fixes. You should never just use spray silicon to fix things. Yeah. But who and I knew that. Imagine that you get, that you would get that much rain yeah. no over and over again but i should have just gone up on the roof and started rather than inside gone outside and fixed the problem i'm i'm just looking up i there's one place that i i fixed that i thought was fine that yeah. had been holding that totally blew out today mr scott would not be happy yeah. with me yeah. and i'm not happy with me either because i've got so many paper products in here that don't do well with anyway that's neither here nor there <laughs> We we got <laughs> upset. We got we got a, a last super chat from two hundred watt studio and he says Yes, my he prediction says my prediction is, is they'll make yeah. Burnham president of Starfleet in the end. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And I say yeah. jede person, die du Well tust, oh so go ahead. Had eine Geschichte zu erzählen, die du noch zu hören hast. Alles was du tun musst ist zuhören. And happy Easter to everyone. Every person you meet has a story to tell that you have yet to hear and all you have to do is listen and i want to thank everyone including my moderators uh tom yeah. jr jackson first of all for this amazing uh photograph of me as the pharaoh of physical media <laughs> so thank you for that Finally. tom i very much appreciate it uh and all of his ai work is actually pretty amusing lord toth is here also so thank you guys you're always here um, obviously, we're doing this show today because we're not going to be here tomorrow. I'll be at WonderCon tomorrow. Check out Starship Smackdown if you want to come see it. Star Wars versus Star Trek. And nice. um, yeah, so and we'll be back next week, though. And there will be a member chat next week as well. And I'll be doing a uh, observations later at 4 o'clock talking about the new kind of gross yeah. Uh, Roy Thomas is now claiming co-creatorship of Wolverine, which Ooh, okay. is, in my mind, a bunch of BS, and uh, it's 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 really gross. And uh, I love Roy Thomas, but now not so much. So I'm going to talk about okay. the controversy there and what that means when some creators can create. Yeah. Uh, they claim co-creation over something that you get paid for now when the creators of it actually are now dead. So, yeah. Anyway. No, anyway. We see you next week, guys, on Sunday again. And once again, thank you, Patrick, for these great shirts. Uh, on the back, they say, let's get physical media, and it's truth, it's very cool. It. And, and, and where can we find Patrick on YouTube? Just go to Patrick's basement and he does Hot Toys reviews, but he always splice in some sketches and he has a new sketch video out, which is I won't give anything away. Just look it up. Perhaps you have fun and leave him a comment. about. And it. once again, thanks everyone for being here. This was a great Saturday show. We will see you next week. Yes.